It's time for Twit this week in tech. It's been a big week with IFA. Lots of new phones, tablets, computers. We'll talk about those. And of course, next week, Apple's got some big announcement or something. Jenny Jardin is back to join us along with Alex Wilhelm from TechCrunch and Alex Lindsay from Pixel Core. It's time for Twit next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for This Week in Tech is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Twit This Week in Tech, episode 526, recorded Sunday, September 6th, 2015. In the Garden with Jenny. This Week in Tech is brought to you by Stamps.com. Start using your time more effectively with Stamps.com. Use Stamps.com to buy and print real U.S. postage the instant you need it right from your desk. For our special offer, go to Stamps.com now. Click on the microphone and enter Twit. And by Braintree. If you're working on a mobile app and searching for a simple payment solution, check out Braintree. With one simple integration, you can offer your customers every way to pay. Period. To learn more, and for your first $50,000 in transactions fee-free, go to BraintreePayments.com slash twit. And by Audible.com. Sign up for the Platinum Plan and get two free books. Go to Audible.com slash twit2. And don't forget to follow Audible on Twitter. User ID Audible underscore com. And by NatureBox. NatureBox ships tasty snacks right to your door with over 100 flavors to choose from, like Asiago and cheddar cheese crisps. You'll never get bored with snacking again. Get your first NatureBox on them at naturebox.com slash twit. It's time for Twit This Week in Tech, the show where we cover the wake's tech news. And, oh, I'm so excited about this show because we have some of my favorite people on. Alex Lindsay has, de has deigned to grace our presence, normally here at MacBreak Weekly. On, hello, hello. On uh, Tuesdays, but I'm so glad to see you on And I won't be here Tuesday. So you're here now. Because we moved it Wednesday. That's right. Wednesday's Mac Break Weekly will be in on a different day, and we'll explain why that is in just a bit. Also here, Alex Wilhelm from TechCrunch, sitting hey, in going? his hall. Hello, Alex. <laughs> It's part of the manor, you know. Your your apartment looks like George Clooney's apartment and up in the air. Like, you, <laughs> do you spend 12 days a year there? Is that it? No, this is actually not even my house. Uh, <laughs> I'm down in Sunnyvale with my family. Uh, and uh, I'm, like, just doing two things at once, I guess. So, nice. Well, thank you. Yeah. I know it's Labor Day weekend, and I appreciate you doing this. Oh, thanks for that. And we are so thrilled, after, I think, a two-year absence, to welcome back <laughs> Jenny Jardin from Boing Boing. Jenny! Hi! Guys. Hi. And um, she's sitting with Chappie, her rescue poodle, <laughs> who is so happy yeah. to be there. He's a happy Chappie. We're happy having a good Chappie. Sunday. Yeah, look, you recognize your name, don't you? Thanks for you being here. Anybody on, uh, out in the audience? On Labor Day. Uh, hey. I, we all followed with interest. Uh, you're, you're, and you were, I, I don't think I'm saying anything out of school here. You were very public with your diagnosis uh, of breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and how's your health now? It's great. Yeah, awesome. I was diagnosed with um, with breast cancer in 2011. On December 1st, 2011, I went in to get my first mammogram. And I you had, tweeted that. You didn't know it was going to be anything. No, no. Uh, a couple of friends of mine, close friends of mine, had recently been diagnosed. And uh, I was going through some big upheaval in my life and had only recently acquired health coverage Wow! and thought that uh, health coverage would be good because I love to bike and bike to my yoga classes and on the beach. And I thought, well, if you're going to be on a bike in Los Angeles, a bicyclist, uh, you should have health insurance because people are very irresponsible about driving in LA with cyclists. Yes. And, you know, I thought, here I am, I'm vegan. I, I you know, run and swim and do all this stuff. People like me don't get cancer. So um, I went for my first mammogram. Uh, I was 41, just turned 41, and live tweeted it because uh, I was more of an oversharer then than I am now, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, I thought that maybe by demystifying the process, I could help somebody else who, like me, thought that it, it was too scary or something. And at the end of the day, um, you know, I could kind of give you a blow by blow, but at the end of the day, 
I had a diagnosis with breast cancer. And um, my life changed a lot. Mm. And we could, you know, I love talking about myself, especially my tragedies. So I could fill up this <laughs> entire show with my tales of woe. But um, yeah, I got, I, I developed a, a real faith in a power greater than myself, which is called science and evidence-based medicine. Right on. And, um, you know, my doctors aren't gods and there are no guarantees in our treatment. Sorry for my bad camera work. I'm sitting on my foot. That's okay. I'm kind I of enjoying now, it. It's very naturalistic. I now believe, <laughs> I now believe very strongly that if you're not having fun, you know, if you're not enjoying the fullness of life every day, you know, you're, you're living life wrong yeah. because there are no, there are no guarantees. But yeah, currently uh, I'm, I'm, my health status is very, very good today. And I'm doing both things that are fun and things that are not fun to help ensure that I'm, I'm, I remain in treatment, uh, but my status is, is great right now. And it's not holding me back from anything I want to do, including forming complete sentences <laughs> on a Sunday afternoon, <laughs> more or less complete with you, uh, Leo, and, and the handsome Alex and Alex. They're both. Come on. They're both. It's so great to have you, Jenny. And I think you're so hey, beloved thanks. on the internet. And everybody... Y'all, you know, everybody forgot what a bitch I was. Ah, <laughs> you see? You see, that's what happens. Yeah. So, so, uh, I'm not your f***ing hero. I'm, just, I'm still the same <laughs> internet bitch. Well, we're all glad to have you back in, in, yeah, in good form. Uh, it's, really, cool. it's really great news. I can't wait to talk to you about my sauerkraut. You are, I, okay, so I follow you on Instagram, so I have been keeping up with you over the last few years, yeah. and I have been watching the strange fermented objects you are making in your home. <laughs> Um, but, but good, good. Yeah. We'll get into that later. <laughs> it's a threat. We'll get into the crowd. We'll later. talk about crowd later. You know, I was in, um, uh, where was I? I was in, uh, uh Budapest mm -hmm. where apparently I guess Hungarians love their sauerkraut. They don't oh. like migrants much, but they love the sauerkraut. <laughs> and, uh, we went to a, a market and there were, and there were many booths, many vendors selling sauerkraut. Mm. Big, giant bowls of fermenting cabbage. It was quite <laughs> pungent. But apparently it's beloved. That and sausages. Good good sauerkraut is yeah. no, good listen, stuff. if you're going to have sausages, you've got to have some real kraut. <laughs> you have something to cut the grease. <laughs> yeah. All right, enough of that. we got more important things to talk about. Um, what could be more important? What could be sauerkraut? more important? I know. Many, many, many things are more important than sauerkraut, in my humble opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Just throwing that out there. Uh I guess we should start with uh, Wednesday because uh, that is, of course, uh, you know, the big event. I don't know how Apple, they're so brilliant. I don't know how they make this the big event every year. You can have IFA, you can have CES, you can have all sorts of announcements and events and products. But boy, the day Apple announces the new iPhones each year, that's the tech event of the year. And it's, I think it's also the tech event for all the other manufacturers. They all well, they know all, what... They all try to beat it, right? All the right. announcements predate the Apple announcement because they know once Apple announces it. And yet, I don't feel like the iPhones are technologically way ahead of anything else. I don't... No, I don't think People so. love them. I, I think that, again, I you know, I, and I have a couple iPhones and a couple Androids. And the, the, the issue is, I think, still, the iPhone is still simpler to use than the Android. The Android, I think there's a lot of features on the Androids that I really like better than the iPhone, and there's things that I use them for specifically. But it's, but I, it's not, again, it's not something that I would necessarily, you know, hand to my parents and say, here's a, you know, my parents are, have, have enough, they work hard enough on the iPhone. So this segment will be the Apple segment, and then we'll get it out of the way, and we'll move on, okay? Might as well, I mean, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't ignore it. Yeah. This is, so Apple has become the Brussels sprouts before a chocolate pudding. <laughs> <laughs> some might wow. say it's the cho some might say it's let's you know life short let's have dessert first. I don't you know it's up to your okay. up to your point of view. Um, it's certainly true that if Apple does something, it it, it impacts the uh, tech community. It impacts users. It's a big deal. For instance, when we've talked about this a lot over the last few weeks, Apple's iOS nine when it comes out will allow ad blockers. Um, and uh, there are a number of companies already positioning themselves to be the ad blocker for mobile Safari. And a lot of people uh, very worried, publishers and, and so forth about it. Jenny, on Boing Boing, uh, you were one of the first. You used the Federated Ad Network, I think, when you first started running ads. Is that well, right? 
uh, one could say that federated media was developed around Boing Boing yes. as a uh, proof of concept. John Battelle, we invited John Battelle to come in and help us figure out if maybe selling some ads might help us offset our server costs. And we found out that the answer was yes. And John went on to build a service that would answer that same business problem for lots and lots of different blogs that were popping up. And, and that's what became Federated. Uh, currently, uh, we're with another company and uh, the business is changing a lot. The business is changing a lot and it's, uh, I, I don't think I'm, sharing anything exclusive in saying that a lot of independent publishers are really having to rethink what they do and what matters and uh, what kinds of possibilities are out there for doing things other than banner ad based businesses. You could argue that Boing Boing does it right. I mean, there's a, um, if we look at Boing Boing right now, there's a banner ad at the top. Uh, there's a, a, a couple of block ads. There's, there's three or four units on the whole page. It's, it's not annoying. It doesn't. There's not a takeover. There's not pop-ups and the pop-unders. Uh, it's exactly a, what you know a reasonable ad-supported page should have. Unfortunately, very few pages anymore do it as uh, unobtrusively and as simplistically. And, simply and who this. knows? It you know it the wildest coincidence could happen. And you know, mere days after this show, we might launch. Uh, a slight upgrade to our design. Who knows what could happen on the internet? Anything are you hinting? Happen. Are you hinting to something? <laughs> yeah. You, know, you never know open. what's going to happen on <laughs> boingboing.net on a day soon this week. Maybe. I actually like this. Uh, this is a re relatively recent redesign. It's already, isn't it? Yeah. And you're going to, okay, well, we'll see what happens. Uh, mm -hmm. Some have said that if blo ad blockalypse happens, which is what I'm <laughs> calling it, it's not a, it's not a very felicitous, but it's uh, if if it does in fact seem that people are as they are, I think starting to widely use ad blockers, that one way to completely defeat that would be to take these simple banner ads. This is an ad for vodka that I'm seeing at the top of Boing Boing. Make it an image served by Boing Boing. It wouldn't be blocked by an ad blocker. It'd be part of the page's content. Right. Yeah. The problem is that this that as almost all ads come from third-party ad ad services um, and, I, and i think that what what makes it hard is is the kind of um trajectory based advertising which is just that you know we have a profile of the user and we're going to put in whatever they last saw on b h or amazon or oh, whatever man, when i buy something i that's all i around. see I, just, I was like i, was I, like, hey, man, I already from, bought that mixer yeah. i don't need that again right but the um uh, but, you know, so so those types of ads, I think, may have a lot of trouble, which, of course, is more of an issue for Google. I think um, the uh, I think when you have a specific sponsor for a specific blog or or for or the kind of things that you have here, you know, with Twit, I think that, that those there's lots of ways of embedding that into the, you know, into what's going on. Uh, it's, it's kind of the the random stuff, I think, that's harder. to. That may be what ends up getting fixed. Now, the reason that these are served by ad networks is because the ad network wants to know. Well, at the very minimum, how many people saw it. Yep. But they probably would also like to know more about who saw it, as much as they can determine age, mm -hmm. demographics, uh, you know, income, that kind of thing. And by combining information from a variety of sites, plus uh, information provided by users unwittingly. Well, you get much more personalized. I mean, like every ad I see now, every display ad I see is something that I'm definitely interested in. And I go but, back, but it's but it's stuff that I, it's it's a little I, go, it's a little I almost like that less. I almost don't want them to know anything about me. I don't want to see an ad and go, oh, I like that. That feels dirty. I almost like <laughs> when they're random that I can ignore them more easily and just move on. You know. I have well, to I didn't do anything effective. to encourage this vodka ad, so I'm presuming that <laughs> <Yeah>. Boing Boing <laughs> does not know who I am. <laughs> However, it, I don't find it uh, obtrusive. I'm going back and forth on this. I, I uh, look, we're at, we're free ad supported media. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think this is really important that ad supported free media exist. It's democratic. It allows anybody to look at it. Uh, if it's done tastefully and unobtrusively, I don't think there's any problem with it. I can also see why a lot of people are becoming very perturbed. 
These pages are tripling in size. They're slowing down by a matter of tens and sometimes half a minute, tens of seconds, half well, a minute. And I get annoyed by the, the just, I mean, I, I get that the, the, you have to be imaginative to keep people's attention, but what really has me want to have an ad blocker is when it takes over the page and it's going to, and I'm now going to hold me there or, you know, I'm going to have to, you know, th those types of things yeah. really become like, okay, now I want a blocker. And, and there I, so are I, sites you really cannot read. I mean, they're right. just, they're overwhelming with ads. And then there's the third part uh, problem, which is malware injection, because right. these networks, ad networks are very often automated and it's possible for a bad guy to buy an ad and inject flash malware uh, before the ad network can catch them. Yeah, we have that problem at TechRun sometimes. We do a lot of our own ad sales, but we do use some networks, and occasionally we'll just get served an ad on a site that's like an autoplay video or a really noisy ad, and then we have to kill it, and it just becomes so annoying. And people we go through still that think too. those work, yeah. you know? So in some ways, the ad advertisers have brought on this ad block ellipse. Uh, but having Apple turn, but kind of, Apple's, by the way, Apple is just allowing it. They're not. They're not. They're not putting one on your system. They're not even encouraging, presumably, you to use it. But they're just making it possible. Yeah, and I don't think it'll happen overnight. But I, de I definitely think that it's gonna. They have a couple of years before everything's yeah blocked. That is not the big announcement, however. Of course, the big announcement will be new hardware, a new iPhone, probably an iPhone six plus, an iPhone six uh, S, six S plus. Um. The latest, the rumor mill's been pretty accurate, I think, uh, as we get this close to announcements like this. Last few Apple announcements, there's been nothing surprising. Rumor mill says the new camera will be 12 megapixels, 4K video capable. That's a catch-up, pretty yeah. much. Uh, most of the uh, other companies' it, phones are doing that, at it'll least. Be, it'll be interesting to see what the resolutions are for stuff like high frame rate, you know, whether it's 4K at 120 frames a second, or maybe it's probably all those high frame rates will probably be the same same 1080p or 720p. Does anybody do HDR video? I think actually my Note 5 will uh, do HDR video. There is HDR video. I don't know if I, I, I'd be surprised if they're doing it for for this. But yeah, you can do HDR video. It takes it's a bit of, it's a bit of work. They also uh, the latest rumor uh, is that there will be not only force touch in the new iPhones but three levels of touch. Whoa. Worries me a little. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. That's uh, this sounded a little touch. creepy when you said it that way. That's too much touch. That's too much touch. Bad touch. <laughs> Nine to five Mac, uh, of course, Mark Gurman is the best at this stuff, um, says that uh, there will be the <laughs> uh, basic touch, which is a, pr a tap. There'll be the medium touch, which is a press. And there'll be the heavy touch, the deeper press. Each oh, my will God. <laughs> I, I've, I've already seen the parody video. I hope Jonathan Song a Day Man writes a song even before <laughs> this announcement comes out. <laughs> it's like this. It's like the uh, this porridge is too hot. This oh, porridge yeah. is too cold. Right. Yeah, this is just right touch. Yeah. this is bad touch. Uh, Show me on the iPhone where the bad man touched you in the <laughs> that's the thing, your interface. The thing that worries me is. I, I've, of course, we have Force Touch on the Apple Watch. Some of the Apple uh, laptops mm -hmm. have Force Touch. I never know what's going to happen. If I have three levels of touch, which is uh, new, I'm not now going to know twice as much what's not going to happen. <laughs> and how am I going to distinguish between a medium and a hard touch? And what did I just do? And and so, for instance, Mark says uh, you could look up a point of interest in the Maps application by pressing it and then force touch on the destination to give start turn by turn. But do you know that's going to happen? And how would you know? And I mean, um, I mean, do you just keep pushing things harder and harder and harder to figure out what to see what happens? I mean, I guess that's going to be a lot of learning curve for people. Well, we'll see. I think, easy. I mean, I think typically what happens is that you don't use it very much and then you, and then it, and then it, uh, I turned it off on the laptops because it just bothered me. Do you use it? Yeah, I use it on the laptop. I find it, I just don't know what's going to happen. Right. I still keep on tapping the laptop, just going. I cannot believe this isn't moving. <laughs> it's like, it's like, it yeah, give happen. me, give me screen touch, a touch screen. I'd be interested. Right. Rose gold would be a new color. Of course, that'll be the one that you can't get because everybody who wants to show off that they have the newest iPhone will order rose gold. Um, so everyone order rose gold so that I can get my black one. And call it you don't want rose gold? No. All right. Apple will have a new TV, too, an Apple TV. Not a TV set, but the Apple TV uh, streaming box will be upgraded. For, uh, and I'm not sure, because I've read conflicting stories. Some say it'll be $150. Bucks, some say it'll be $200. Bucks. Some say there are two different 
Apple TV boxes. It sounds like the rumor is they're going to have a cheap. They're going to keep selling the one that they have cheaper, so that you can always get an Apple TV. Yeah, they dropped but, that to sixty nine earlier this year. But they're going to they're going to soup up the one that they have, um, and by adding things like I, I think that I think that um, it's interesting. A lot of the rumors are that they're not going to go for four K, which seems odd to have a phone that shoots four K and an Apple TV that won't play it. Mm. Um, they even have computers. They have iMacs that will do five K. Right, so it just seems it seems like that's an odd rumor if it, if it turns out to be the case. Uh, I think that the the I think the game changer with the with the Apple TV is going to be opening it up for app development. There are so, not just for games, but but for also for education, uh, for um, uh, enterprise. There are so many possibilities um, for what you can develop with a, a little puck that you can you know add a lot of features to. So I think that's going to be very interesting. Is this finally the Apple TV that we're going to care about? No. I feel like they've been updating these for years, and I still just don't care about it. I mean, the only cool reason devices, you want an Apple I mean. TV, there's only two reasons you'd want an Apple TV. One, because you buy stuff on iTunes, movies and TV shows, or because you want to do the AirPlay from an Apple device to your screen. And mm -hmm. that's the only thing that Apple TV has to itself. Everything right. else can be done on a Roku or an Amazon Fire TV or an Android TV. So Apple owns that market. And I guess that's why you'd I have an Apple TV because I uh, I do buy stuff or I have bought stuff on iTunes. Um, Leo, what do you think of Apple Music in its, uh, oh. in its current state? Actually, I was going to ask you what you think of Apple Music. But I asked you first. Okay. Um, I don't see, I, this is an example of something where I don't see that Apple innovated in any way. It just. I think they could innovate. There's ways that they could innovate and they're just not doing it yet. Maybe, you know, we're actually all going to have to make a decision because if you turned on the three-month three, three month trial, it will expire in a few weeks at the end of September. So uh, I turned it on on June 29th when iOS mm -hmm. 8 came out and or 8.4 yep. came out. So that means at the end of the month, I'm going to have to decide if I want to spend 10 bucks a month to keep this. I already have Spotify. I already have Pandora. Pay for both of those. Pay for Google Music. I probably shouldn't pay for all of those. I don't see any reason to keep paying for Apple TV if you've or Apple Music if you've got one of those. I don't think that they've added. I, I I mean the guys in the other in my studio are listening to the whatever it is Beach, Beach One. One and uh, Beach One. I don't know Beach that, One. Be, that, that would be worth it um, for me. The the um, I think that uh, I still use Spotify and I'm I like um, Spotify. You know my, my problem me is I'm kind amazing. of embedded into yeah. it. I don't see I don't see anything that Apple TV is giving me that I really want. I, there are things that I would love to see from both of these things like. Crossfades <laughs> between songs, like you know. So I used to be Don't a DJ. They, so it's like Spotify do a crossfade. No, they does yeah. automatic crossfades. What uh, I want is oh. I, want, I, I just want a little curve. Just give me a little. Let, let me let me do a little mix. Well, you between, can set how many make, seconds. I think. I know, but what you want is to be able to when you build your playlist. I mean, you oh come geeky. on, you're nuts. Nobody's gonna want to do that. Do you mean for oh each gosh. individual segment? And then you would never leave that service because you built you built your little <laughs> you know like you. I'm just telling stop. you that once you're an ex DJ. You, I know, but once you have that control, yeah. you never give it up. I'm just telling you. So Jenny, yeah. I'm gonna turn the tables on you. What do you think? Yes. Uh, what do I think of about? Apple Music? Are you gonna keep it? Hmm. You know, uh, I love so much of what Apple does. I, I absolutely love my iPhone, and I've done work that I'm so proud of that wouldn't have been possible, like uh, news work with this device, that I feel like the quality wouldn't have been possible with any other right. device. And I feel like the exact opposite is true with Apple Music. It's just bloat chasing a product in, instead of uh, something that was really designed with the user's experience in mind. Uh, uh, Spotify does it well. They don't do it perfectly, but yeah, hell, I I still miss Win app, so don't ask me. <laughs> you know, it really I'm, a, whips I'm an old internet lady. Butt. Yeah. How about you, Alex? Are you an Apple Music user at this point? Sorry, not even slightly. I'm actually a big Spotify fan, and I really am curious about how much room there is in the market for Beats One, Spotify, Pandora, Apple right. Music, Deezer, and everyone else. I mean, how many uh, how many of these are going to survive? Well, there's a big question because, uh, of course, it, they really only survive uh, at the pleasure of the music industry. At any point, the music industry could just say to all, any or all of these, yeah, right. it was a nice, nice experiment. We don't really think we're making enough money. I mean, we've seen it already happen I mean, with with some artists pulling their music from these Well, services. I mean, Taylor Swift. I mean, No, but the whole industry, the there's no reason. No. That, there's only three labels now, right? Is it is it down from five? Well, they, they, there's, BMG, no, there's lots of labels, but there's only three that three. are like... They own them all. 85%. So these guys could say, you know, what do you think? Should we get rid of this stuff? Yeah, I don't like it. Okay, we're going to pull the plug on all streaming music services. And then they yeah, just, but then where do they, they go for new revenue? I mean, like, if you do that, 
with declining iTunes sales and, and falling, you know, physical sales already, where do you turn? You know, what's the third option if you don't allow it for streaming? So I don't really know if there's a, there's a pathway out for them, even though they have all the power. I think it's no accident that Spotify and others are doing this now too, has turned to podcasts and other kinds of content that are not owned by the music industry uh, because they need stuff in case the music industry, they don't have to turn off the, 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 the spigot. They can just say, you know, it's good. We've decided to make the royalty rate 8%. That's all they have to do. And uh, most of these companies are so close to the edge anyway. Uh, right. Of not, I mean, Apple could keep it going just because they just say, well, okay, we're going to lose money. But it's important to us to have the service. Well, it would be to, it would, it would be to Apple's advantage if the, if the industry increased their, their rates. Absolutely, because Apple would pay. put everybody else out and Apple yeah. would just be, you know, and then there'd be another lawsuit and it'd be, they'd well, be Apple sued kinda, or something. Didn't Apple kind of do that when it went and lobbied all the, uh, the record labels to say, you know, you shouldn't let Spotify have a free tier. You shouldn't let these services have a free tier. That's a bad thing. And you know, they, every musician I know hates Spotify. Yeah. Uh, most of all of these services. Why? Um, they, uh, the amount that the artists get back is, is minimal. Less than other services? About, uh, you know, I, I, I'm an art major. I'm not very good at that. Well, I, I, every time we see the, the, the numbers, we see the numbers with Pandora. And the reason that they all pick Pandora is because Pandora pays almost nothing. Uh, Spotify is about a half a cent uh, a play. Um, and if you look at an album that you might have bought that you listen to a lot, you ended up paying about a half a cent <laughs> if you listen to it a lot. But they got you know, nothing so. for radio play. The only people who got money for radio play were the songwriters, performance. There was right. no performance royalty. Right. Uh, and they accepted that because it was a promotional value. They figured, well, if we can get airplay, we could sell records. Well, that was how it used to be done. And really, the, the bands that are making money now are, are really focusing on tours. I mean, that's, you know, yeah. the money the money's made by performing, you know, not, not necessarily by selling. Um, and they do make a lot of money doing that. So I think the problem for Apple is that unless Apple Music is significantly head and shoulders above whatever you're using today, it's a, it's a hard sell. I'm not going to make a lateral move. It's the same price. If it's roughly the same service as Spotify, I'm not going to make that. La Why would, at a loyalty to Apple, I'll make the move? They've also well, kind of missed the boat. I, I think they missed the boat on Android users who are, I know Apple, you don't love Android users, but that's a significant number of people. There is still no Apple Music for Android. Here we are, one month left in the trial offer, and they still haven't released Apple Music for Android. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know if they're. That's a, maybe they won't at all. They said they would. Well, you know, it'll it'll happen eventually. And I think that there's a certain inertia that Apple has. I mean, you look at like the top apps that anyone uses. No matter how much fun we make of of Apple Maps, it's still the twelfth most popular app ever. You know, because I mean? it's or, there, right now. it's right on the well, screen. It's because when you click on anything on yeah. your phone, you end up in Apple Maps. Right. And so there's a certain level of inertia that Apple's going to get out of this that I think that they can take advantage of. Um, uh, you know, and, and probably grow it into a, a medium business. But I don't. I, unless they do something really transformative, I don't know how they. What they have now is not transformative. It's not enough to pull people away from Spotify. Fortune magazine publishes a survey from Adobe that some have said uh, have called foul play on. Uh, the The cable industry calls TV everywhere. That's their term for internet television. And according to this Adobe survey, Apple dominates internet television with 62% of the market share on iOS, Mac, and Apple TV. 18%, the next largest chunk for Windows PCs, only 9% Android, 7% Roku, and down, down, down after that. In other words, according to this study from Adobe, and it's paid authenticated streaming, not clear. I mean, that would be HBO Go, HBO Now, Showtime. Not clear if that includes Netflix. It's definitely not YouTube. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming this is not ad-supported. This is people actually This is paying paid, for it, right? Right. So it's kind of hard. I don't think that's apples to apples because, I mean, there's a lot of revenue being generated by the ad-supported networks. Um, but but I think Apple always has the majority of paid users. So it just shows you that <laughs> yeah, Apple TV, true, despite its... applications as well, right? And this is true yeah. for apps and all sorts of content. So that it's this big of a disparity, I don't think it's surprising in the slightest. It's just I'm that Apple TV is not... Is, I mean, it's, it's still a hobby, I think. And yet, because but it, uh, between it and iOS, total dominance for Apple in the paid streams well i buy i mean i i have a lot of movies on on my ios yeah <laughs> on my ios slash whatever and, and a lot of it has to do with the fact that i i, I fly a lot and so um you know all you the download streaming, them you don't I, want to stream yeah i just buy them and i and i don't rent because every time i rent i never 
watch them in the in the window. Right. Like always. The always, worst thing is watch half a movie like, and then it expired. Oh, yeah. So so I, I never uh, know. So I I just I just uh, buy them. I don't I don't go to the theater anymore. That, that's my argument. <laughs> well, we'll do our we'll start our live coverage at nine thirty nine forty five thereabouts Wednesday morning September 9th. I will not be here. I'm flying back east uh, on uh, Tuesday night for uh, the IAB upfronts. We're I guess pitch. I don't know what it is. Some advertising thing. But uh, <laughs> some I don't know what it is. You know, I have money. I don't you don't really, uh, <laughs> Actually, it's a big deal for podcasting. It really is kind of a uh, kind of a watershed moment for podcasts. Upfronts, the networks have had upfronts for years. They get all the new shows together. They get the stars of the new shows together. They get them in the room with the big advertisers and they say, okay, you want to buy a year worth of ads on Heroes? It's going to be huge. They sell a year ahead of time, a year up front, in effect. Uh, I, uh, this is, uh, you have, there were the new fronts that happened with YouTube not so long ago. Same idea. I don't know how successful those were. This is, as far as I know, the first podcast up fronts. So I'll be at there instead of at the uh, Apple event. But we'll be covering it uh, live at 945 and then right after a Mac Break Weekly. Yep. Will you be here for that? I'll be here for both. Good. Thank goodness somebody will be. Uh, and it's always interesting. It's a, well, How does Apple do that? What do you think, Alex? How does Keep Apple get all that attention? I think the the proper point is that the devices are just better. I mean, Apple hardware is, a, in my experience, just such a more superior product that we all get excited. Is that still I mean, true? How, how do you think Samsung? I think I think it is. I mean, how do you think Samsung feels every Apple event? They just have to watch Apple beat them, you know, I know. again. I know. And so I think it's going to be dispiriting for the, the larger industry. But I mean, fundamentally, if you look at the media and you talk to them, they're nearly all on iPhone still. And so I think that mind share that Apple controls, it, you know, guides coverage, and therefore they just get more total. You know, attention paid to them. How much of that is you know, inertia, like, though? I mean, I know I, I'll grant you that was true for so many years. Okay. How much of that is I, inertia? I think some of it's inertia, but I also think that it it that Apple has a lot of discipline. I mean, I think that the, the issue that you have with a lot of the other manufacturers, they're releasing phones year round. I mean, yeah. and there's a thousand phones, and there are a thousand different sizes, and they they release four at the same time, and they're all slightly different. And you can't, I you, you I don't understand how anyone could pick an Android phone in a Verizon store because, or you know, T-Mobile store because it's just so many of these. You have to go. It'll take you hours. To, to figure out which one is the one if you're not really, you have to really be an expert to figure out exactly the one that you want or you just give up and buy something, you know, just buy something. And so I think that's the trouble that they have is that there's nothing stands out. Apple only does it once a year. Shani, you're a self-proclaimed Apple fan. Is the, app, is the attention Apple gets uh, at these events merited? Well, you know, I it's so fun covering them. Like, it's just always been kind of a fun that's, spectacle. That's the truth, isn't it? There's the there's a truth. It's a we fun spectacle. It so and yeah. I, I, look, I, I use uh, Apple products because they don't get in the way of my work. And they, for so long, placed usability and good design uh, above all else. And I, I think you can't fake good design. And I think uh, there's a reason that a, a lot of designers find themselves oriented towards uh, Apple hardware. Yeah. It's 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 beautifully made and it it tends to just work. Uh, I don't know. And, and like the events are just they're beautifully staged. They're beautiful theater. It's it's a it's the gold standard of corporate theater. And I don't say that in a mocking way like no, Apple, I think you're it's right. all fake and you're just phones, man. Like yeah. They're phones. Well, and I and, and we use them every day, all the time, and they become our interface with the world and with everything that we love. The design of your phone matters. What other thing are you going to hold that much and use for that many fun things, important things, mundane things? It's, yeah. it's maybe the most importantly designed thing that you have. And, and I actually think that the, the events have gotten better since really yeah i mean i, I they're a lot shorter they're a lot yep. shorter and a lot less bs at the beginning and and they've they've actually i feel like they they move from one thing to the, to the other in the last couple of years and you know we stream a lot of corporate you know large corporate events you and, got dreamforce coming up next yeah a couple of weeks and and so you we sit in, in the back and i don't think anybody has any idea of how much work it takes to do something like what apple does apple's or what been rehearsing Salesforce in all likelihood does. for the last two weeks already 
At least. At least. Oh, two you know, weeks? Are you kidding? Yeah, months. 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 And, yeah. and and so they, they have, you know, they'll be, I, you know, I, we're not involved in in that one, but but the uh, but in the ones that we have, they'll, they'll be, a lot of the ones we work on, they'll be rehearsing for months. When they get up there, they're, they're, once they're on stage with all the gear up there, they're going over and over for days, yeah. you know, um, you know, uh, rehearsing it to get every last little bit like, oh, the mouse was a little bit here. Let's speed that up a little bit. You know, it's it's really. I'm guessing they couldn't get Jimmy Iovine and Drake to the uh, no, rehearsals and and last and time. Every time you see one of those events and it's a little rough, that means that those are the guys that didn't show up for the <laughs> rehearsal. <laughs> they didn't come. <laughs> and, and no one could say to Drake, yeah. what are you doing? You should have yeah. been here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really curious. Do we still find Apple events as fun, given that we generally know everything that's going to happen ahead of time? Because I feel a few years back, you know, there was a lot more mystery and intrigue to them. Yes. Uh, whereas now we've got Mark Gurman, he goes us you know, the download, and then we just watch them reannounce it. So do we care as much, or is it less interesting? I think for the last two years, it's been there haven't been any surprises, have there? Every once in a while, there's a little bit of, you know, something went one way or the other, or something doesn't show up. I think we all expected an Apple TV at WWDC and didn't see yeah. it. Um, you always want that one more thing. Steve, you know, I have mm -hmm. to say, I don't think they've been as good since Steve passed. Uh, the one more things have not been as good? No, that's just the whole thing. I, Steve <laughs> oh. was a master at this. Mm -hmm. yes. And even when he was deathly ill, uh, he was a master. And I don't, yes. I don't think Tim Cook or Phil Schiller or Eddie Q have the kind of same kind of charisma and excitement to watch. I've, I I honestly feel like Apple is coasting a little bit on those great days. Oh, maybe. I mean, I think that. I mean, I wouldn't say coasting. I mean, the last time they released an iPhone, it was it did okay. I don't hey, know if that's coasting. But, but of, see, <laughs> okay, coasting people often conflate sales well, with innovation and brilliance and all that. It's just sales. You can make a lot of excuses for why it's selling so well. Windows sold really well in the '90s. Didn't make Windows a great operating system. In fact, it right. still sells pretty well. Mm. Uh, sales are it's not the measure of whether this is exciting or interesting or innovative. Wow, or great way music. to throw shade at Microsoft and <laughs> Apple. Hey, I'm good at that. Leo. I throw shade at the whole industry. Well, I, so I, I guess my, I, it's the, the only thing is, is that I, I think that what Apple is, it's not so much innovate. What they innovate with is... <laughs> I didn't it, mean to play with your shirt. Like, you got like, a little like, tag on your shirt. It's I cool. I like it. I'm just playing I with it. I know. It's stupid. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, so anyway, but the um, uh, I, I think that what Apple does is not that they innovate well, is that they say no really well. They say no mm. to certain things. That's they key. say no to, you know. And, Jobs and, said that. And they are very, very good at saying, yeah. okay, we're not going to do this. We're, we are going to do this. And, and they're good at, at creating something that, that, again, just works, that's fairly simple. And when they... You know, there are definitely places like I, I think Apple Music is not that. I think it's a whole lot of yes to a whole lot of things that I don't understand. Um, but but I think that for a lot of times what they're really good at, I mean, these other, a lot of their competitors say yes to everything. Right. And they make a version of everything. That's how Samsung you know? does business. It's confusing, though. I mean, it's con for their com for their market, it's They've confusing. They've actually learned. It's overwhelming. They, they, they really I feel like I feel like that's why Apple Music isn't up to snuff because it appears to have been designed with the opposite... The opposite yeah. of thinking. They, they <laughs> the really did think opposite. opposite. Yes. The opposite thinking. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. No, it was it was it's like a, a different me too. Team. It was a me too product and like uh well, it added more features than the other one has. Yeah. You know, and yeah. I think that was the 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 issue that I I don't it, think it, it really went worked. it went bloated instead of being narrowly focused and uh, and just so. But you know that's the iTunes story from day one. Right, exactly. I mean. <laughs> it's just this constant disastrous expanding yeah. software. But yeah. you think they would have learned from that because iTunes is now kind of a running joke in tech circles about how bad it is. But with Apple Music, they didn't really apply those the same lessons. I don't feel. Is it the case that Apple's really good at hardware and not so good at uh, software and services? Yes. Is that really what it services, is? Services, I think they have a hard time understanding. Uh, we know they don't do well at services. So this event is at a seven thousand seat. Auditorium, this the Which Bill is a Graham very, it's a but. huge shift. For I Apple. wasn't invited. Neither was I. Do you oh. usually get invited? Yeah. Oh, well, I never get invited, so it's no big deal for I've me. I've never gotten invited. <laughs> I think I probably just screwed my chances of ever being invited no, back. No, you love Apple. Apple, yeah. aren't you aren't you feeling pretty bad right now that you did not invite Jenny? You've got seven thousand <laughs> seats. Are you saying? That she's 7,001 in your hearts, Apple? It's okay. No, I mean, at the end of the day, it's a it's a product. I use the product, right. so I'm biased in that respect. Right. Um, but I, this isn't like universal health care. Like, it's okay if they <laughs> don't invite right. me. I'm yeah, still going right. to use their product. <clears throat> <clears throat> I'm trying to figure out what they're going to use 7,000 seats for. It may just mm -hmm. be more Apple employees. That's one thing that's always been kind of... I know I've talked to Apple employees. They sometimes are sad they don't get invited to these events. Right. They're stuck watching a big screen in Cupertino or maybe nothing at all. 
um, hey, you know, uh, you don't want it to be empty. What you don't want is 500 people in the front and then 6,500 empty seats in the back. Right. So they'll fill it. Do you think they're going to give everyone an iPhone? Is that what it's about? No. It's not Oprah. Come on now. <laughs> no. And you, you know, like, get you an iPhone. Oh, yeah. Starting in 2017, yeah. they won't be doing these. Uh, well, I presume they won't be doing these outside the Apple campus. Uh, this is a great, this is the new drone video. Uh, in fact, they did a really nice job bringing Steve Jobs' presentation to the Cupertino City Council for this new Apple campus together with the latest uh, video, uh, drone video from the Apple campus. And uh, I've jumped to the middle because they're about to show where the new meeting spot will be. This is the Whoa, auditorium that, oh, wow. that Apple's building. It will all be underground. Notice no windows. This wow. is where you'll be going in future for iPhone events, iPod events, and when Apple announces its car. Um, Apple the events, announces its car. Yes. This is the uh, auditorium's entrance. Wow. And you'll go down. It'll be like kind of like the Fifth Avenue uh, uh, Apple Store where there's a big glass entrance and you'll go down into this pit. That's wild. Uh, pretty cool looking. I, I, by the way, uh, props to the guy who had, has been doing these because uh, it's really fun to watch as this campus evolves. It is a massive construction project. I have to admit, I've wrecked so many drones now that I, that I look at these and I'm like, I, I can't believe he just did that over those yeah. people. Or yeah, construction site. I mean, they, they start, in fact, you can see at the beginning of the event, uh, here's Steve presenting to the Cupertino City Council. Uh, we bought that and we bought some adjacent property. There <coughs> used to be apricot trees, uh, apricot orchards, and we've got about a This was one of the years. last public mm -hmm. appearances Steve ever made. He was very ill. Um, they, they, they start these drones up from outside the fences, mm -hmm. and then they fly up. Oh, here we go. They fly up and over the fence. <laughs> I'm I'm shocked that somebody from Apple hasn't shot this drone down. <laughs> um, That'd be a fun size project. The new drone laser cannons would be perfect for the roof of the Cupertino Apple complex. There are tools. 40,000 employees will all be housed in this one building. There's a four-story parking structure underground. But it's not big enough to hold all the cars, so there's an external four-story parking structure as well. I'm sorry, it's two stories underground, four stories above ground. Um, pretty it's impressive. Awesome. Yeah. All right, let's take a break. We come back, lots more to talk about. We've got Alex Wilhelm here from TechCrunch. Great to have you. Sometime you got to come up here. Well, you were up here last time. I was up here well, about a month ago. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Love having you up here. If you ever want to come back and be in the studio with us, I'll make sure there's a... I don't know. What do you drink? Last time I drank tequila on the show. There'll be a tequila waiting for you. Okay. That works for me. You like salt? Uh, only if you're buying. <laughs> yeah. Salt's on me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Jenny Jardin from Boing Boing. So great to have you, Bat. Boingboing.net. And uh, is Chappie uh, still with you or has he moved on? He got bored. He got bored. Yeah. He's an Android user. I love it, Jenny. <laughs> Jenny is sitting out in her garden. I love it. We, we get a lot of people doing that lately. I love that. Yeah. Uh, enjoying I can't wait to show you my squash and let's see uh, your, let's see the squash tomatoes. Can I? Yeah. Okay. So here we are. I'm gonna walk downstairs. Oh my god! I'm barefoot. It's gonna be hot asphalt. <laughs> All right. Let me see if I can turn. This is awesome. Did, did the camera turn around, or are you still see my? We're face? still seeing your face. Oh, there it I goes. It go. took a little while. Look at that. Those look like limes. Right. What is that? This is oh, Meyer tomatoes. lemon. Oh, Meyer, Meyer lemon. lemon. Mm. And behind it. This is some volunteer squash. Uh, I might lose my Wi-Fi, so I don't want to go too far in. And can you see there's a lot of mm. tiny baby kale and arugula. And do they allow you to do this in, this in the uh, in Los Angeles, in the environs of Los Angeles? Absolutely. Well, these <laughs> are just raised beds on top of... <laughs> look, uh, it, can you still see? Yeah. Excuse me, all kinds oh, of ideas. Great. There's there's some boxes that uh, like plant planter boxes in the new house I just moved into. I and think I'm this like, is oh, I got to do you, this. This is healing. Did you do this before you got ill, or was this something you did after? So a long time before I did this, but then I got way too far up my own butt, thinking that uh, work was more important than connection with nature. Love it. And I I just find this really comforting. I I do lots of slow food stuff like baking bread and yeah. fermenting sauerkraut and kombucha and stuff. Yeah. It just it just relaxes me. I feel like it connects me with something my grandmas would have done. Can you see the tiny little kales growing under there? Oh, look at that. Look at now, that. How do you like to do your kale? Wait, look. 
there's flowers growing on these squash. This is so insane. How do this I like is, to do my kale? the strangest right episode of Twit. <laughs> <laughs> We've never had a garden show. tour on Twit before, but I, I think uh, it's about time. We'll show. You, you can see me, right? Urban, urban no, I still, it'll turn around. Tell you what, okay. as you go back up the stairs, let me do the ad, and we'll come back with more of Jenny Jardin. Alex is also here, Alex Lindsay from the Pixel Core, and we're talking high tech. And you know what? I know Apple uh, gets a lot of attention, but they're not the only story this week. There's lots more to talk about. Uh, next week, we'll try to do, uh, we'll bring in uh, some Apple experts, try to do some analysis on uh, what Apple announces on uh, Wednesday. If they're true to form, they'll announce on Wednesday. You'll be able to pre-order on Friday, and they'll arrive on the 18th. Something like that. I hope that's the case. For the, for the, for the, the people who ordered at 12.01 to 12.03. Yeah. You have, I overslept <laughs> when the watch came out. Weeks. Took me extra three weeks yeah. to get one. And then this is cool. We'll get Alex to show us this. This is something that's actually going to put me back in the iPhone oh, man. family because I want to use this lightning-enabled camera from DxO, but we'll ask Alex about that in just a bit. Our show today brought to you by Stamps.com. Use Stamps.com instead of going to the post office. With Stamps.com, you use your computer, your printer, to print official U.S. postage without a visit to the post office. It's not a postage meter. It's much better than that. No special ink. What you've got will work. And you get, uh, you know, you don't have to go to the post office. You get the postage you need. Always the right amount because you get a USB scale that will automatically weigh and print the postage, whether it's for a letter, a postcard, a package, right at your own desk. You even get discounts from stamps.com you can't get at the post office, which is pretty awesome. Uh, a fraction of the cost of a postage meter, too. You save at least 50%. And no more trips to the post office. I, I love stamps.com. We use it here. If you are in the business of mailing stuff, whether it's brochures or products, it's important that your mailers look professional. I, you know, I hate, <laughs> it happens all the time. I'll buy something on Etsy <clears throat> and it comes in a rumpled brown paper squished box with lots of stamps all over it. And I just, it's, it doesn't give the right impression. I mean, it works, but it doesn't give the right impression. With stamps.com, all your packages look pro. And your customers will like it too because they'll, if it's certified mail or, you know, you need a confirmation, they will get an email with tracking number. Um, postage insurance is discounted through stamps.com. And if you have to fill out forms for certified mail or international customs, stamps.com will do it automatically right from uh, the, the website. So you're really not doing any data entry on this. It saves you time, it saves you money, and it looks more professional. I Look, there's no question you need to try it. Here's the deal. Go to stamps.com right now. Click the microphone. It's up there in the upper right-hand corner. And use our promo code TWIT. Watch this, because it said $5 in free postage. I think we can improve on that. Just put T-W-I-T -T in the promo code there. And then, whoa! Suddenly, it's on a $110 bonus offer, including $55 in postage. You get the scale. You get a month of stamps.com. you got to try it today. I'm telling you, it will change the way you look at mailing. Stamps.com. Before you do anything else, click the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in TWIT. Stamps.com. Use the offer code TWIT. I need this. i gotta, I got to really have to praise Stamps.com because uh, they're one of the early podcast advertisers. They've been so supportive. I don't know how many years now we've been doing their ads on the TWIT. And they just, it's a great company. I've always loved them, and I'm really glad that they have been so supportive. So many podcasts uh, are supported by Stamps.com, to be frank, uh, including ours. So thank you, Stamps.com. Jenny, are you, oh, we lost Jenny. I think, I think she Ooh, wandered tangles. too far <laughs> in her garden. <laughs> we'll get Jenny Chardin back from boingboing.net. Uh, Alex Wilhelm from TechCrunch. Are you, are, are you going to the Apple event, Alex? They're probably sending... Who are they sending? John Constine, probably, right? Oh, I don't hear you. Oh, actually, didn't John Constine leave TechCrunch to go to work for Apple? I feel like he did. Where well, Alex, you're muted. <coughs> oh, <laughs> there wow, we sorry. go. All those <laughs> pearls of wisdom lost. I was uh, I was trying to answer you. I'm like, why are you still talking? Um, no, uh, Daryl Atherington left. Uh, not Daryl. Daryl left. Okay. Yes, Daryl left. He's doing um, stuff. I can't tell you what, they're just Apple. They're Magic all... stuff for Apple. Yes. He's doing I miss him beach. already. He's very cool. Yeah. So John's still there. Josh. Josh, I mean, yeah, still there. Josh, is Josh and his hair 
dangle thing. Yes, still very much part <laughs> and of the. And is he uh, going to go to the uh, Apple event? Who's going to the Apple event from TechCrunch? I think Matthew Panzerino always goes, oh, yeah, and we usually have one or two other slots. I'm yeah. not sure who we're sending. I'm just back up on that team, so I'll be watching the stream. Like if they else. need any help, Jenny and I don't have invitations. We'd be glad to go in their place. I, I if there's an open one, I'm taking it. <laughs> but if I, if I die between now and then, you may have it. Thank you very much. We actually are sending a camera crew down. We did this last time, and we had a better picture than Apple did, <laughs> which I thought was nice. You know, right. Apple will be streaming their event. What we do is we watch the stream, and then we uh, chat about snark it, snark about it, and things like that. Google uh, changed their logo. They dropped the serif. Great article in the New Yorker about this. Um, I think the uh, article was titled "Google Shot the Serif." <laughs> <laughs> Which is That's perhaps great. the best title ever from the New Yorker. Um, the idea here is I gu I, I'm guessing that Google wanted to start looking uh, soft and kind and, well, it's and actually gentle. Very, it's fairly unusual to see a serif font on a logo. Is, ser is serif gone? It's not gone. You use it for other things, but, but it's, not, it's not something you typically use in a display font. So um, this article in the New Yorker by uh, Sarah Larson... Uh, says that the thing about serifs is uh, they're old-fashioned, that they hearken to the dark ages of publishing. Uh, of course, and, it's funny that she says that while you're reading a serif font. font. Well, that but that the New Yorker is, of course, actually their title uh, font is not serif, right. isn't it? But but the New Yorker has always been a determined, determinedly right. serified. Right. <laughs> I mean, you don't get more serifs than you get in the New Yorker. Um, I don't think those are actually words, Leo. That's just serifies <laughs> English. I, don't, I can't just say things. <laughs> I, can, I can make up words. I can. Okay. All right. Um, uh, she says the, uh, the letters, uh, the old Google logos, literary old serifs were subtly authoritative. The sturdy, handsome G, the stately, appealing little O, the typewriterish, lovable G, the elegant I, the or L, rather, the thoughtful E. The new logo retains the rainbow colors but sheds the grown-up curly cues. It now evokes children's refrigerator magnets, McDonald's french fries, Comic Sans. I mean, do people really so care this much? She was <laughs> yeah, I've never thought about anything in that much depth. Like, she named the letters? I mean, the authoritative G? What is it? That is... Yeah. That's also not English. I mean, like, what is going on with people? I am, you know. I am in Sarah's camp. I feel I like serifs. I cannot lie. Um, I think Google, you could say, is trying to look a little softer, kinder, friendlier, a little more childlike with the new logo. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I... You just think it's more modern material design and all that. Yeah, I, I think it fits into more what they're doing. I guess technically they, they did point out that it is much smaller, evidently. You mean... Uh, in K, K, the number of number, number of, of yeah. kilobytes. No, the number of kilobytes is something like one fifth the number that it was. And that is not to be uh, deprecated, after all, because they imagine all the queries, millions and millions and millions right. of queries a second. They, they, each little K counts. So I, I I've been told that it <clears> is more efficient. Yeah, but then they, they do this like JavaScript where they yeah exactly you know I mean <laughs> I, can, I don't know. I don't know really if they're all about saving the K. No, I, I don't know. I, I'm sure that, but, that was only a minor thing. But but the but the uh, you know, I, I feel like it's. I think you know we're all going to talk about it for, and then uh, it will be nothing in. No, you get used. A year to it. it'll just be what their logo looks but, like. But you know, if you read the Google blog a post about this new logo, they spent a lot of time and I'm sure a lot of money debating, thinking. You know, what should we do? So I think it's only appropriate that we. Uh, do the same. We obsess about it. No? Here's no, a I mean, so Verizon, my corporate overlord, uh, dropped a new logo this week that everyone also hated. And uh, I stopped thinking about it like four seconds later. Yeah. You know, I think yeah. it's, this is good material to keep in mind. But like, you know, in, in a month, we're going to have forgotten there was an old logo to begin with. So, I mean, good job, Google. But I think we can kind of just be like, <laughs> moving on. Uh, yeah, you know, and who sees the Google logo? I mean, nobody goes to Google.com anymore, right? I think. Oh, a lot of people really go to Google.com. Yeah, yeah. I, I was just going to say, I, I think uh, I, it, it's interesting the way that people react to redesigns at their favorite brands or redesigns of their favorite brands. It's almost like uh, if there's a brand that you don't connect to too deeply and they change their logo, Verizon. it doesn't upset you that much. 
But, but if Verizon. it's um, if it's a tool that you use all the time every day and you have uh, a, a certain kind of a sense of intimacy or identification with it, it makes you mad. It's like they moved your cheese. It's like they changed part of you. You know? They moved when, when you change my cheese. <laughs> That's a book, right? Yeah. Yeah. Who who moved my cheese or who moved the whatever it is, that book. <laughs> cool, cut off my damn seraphs. I, I love uh, John Ledger's uh, tweet. He's the CEO of T-Mobile, Verizon competitor. He tweeted, because the new logo is a Verizon with a check mark. Alex, just hide your eyes here. Don't look at that. Okay, I'm going to avert my vision. Screws over customers, check. Data overage penalties, check. Keeps all your unused data, check. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, well, this is the new logo, the Verizon with a red check there, huh? He spent a lot of yeah, money on that. It. All, wow. All wow. I don't know. Uh, are they getting rid of red? No, the, the check mark's still red, but I mean, it, it looks like a font they did. Oh, actually, this is a really funny story. Pull this up. Yeah. The, the next one did a great post on the logo, and yeah. Uh, my, old, my old home. You couldn't make that up. If you I, might, I might have to put a little uh, red symbol I next would, to my name. I would like to say that all online brands should stop using red. Um, is red bad? What they what what red happen? What happens with red in H two sixty four? No one should use red ever. That's a good one. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> Ooh, I love these. So this is a logo randomizer, apparently that uh, uh, called the logo generator. I have to run twit.tv through the logo generator. What what are we gonna get for the twenty fifteen logo generator? We get a splat. Oh, you can hit, you can hit the randomize button and get another one. Should I get another one? Let's see what else you can get. I like that splat, though. I don't know. Maybe we should uh, Maybe that's consider a redesign. Um, Here. That's it. Ooh, Ooh. music. I don't uh, know what that Chanel. is. Chanel. Recycles. <laughs> there you go. Traffic cone. Twit.tv traffic cone. It just shows you uh, Whoa, how easy it is to create a new logo. <laughs> Yeah, there. Dangerous. That's, it. that's dangerous. Twit that's is it. dangerous. <laughs> I gotta write a check. This is good. The logo generator. This is at uh well, just Google logo generator. It's a long uh and useless URL that you'll never use anyway. Uh did you you did see that Lenovo uh is, likes the same E. <laughs> I don't know if this is all right. All right. What, at this point we're really going too far. Okay. But uh, here it is. This is uh, this is uh, Vlad Savov writing for The Verge. It turns out the E in Google is exactly the same as the E in Lenovo. And both, by the way, have decided sans serif is the way. I shouldn't that, knock it. I'm, I, I, it was terrifying. We eliminated serifs on the uh, Google, I mean, the Twit website months ago because serifs are so old. <laughs> Fuddy-duddy. <laughs> Fusty. We use Verlog. So are you going to have serifs on a, a imaginary redesign at boingboing.net? Maybe so. <laughs> <laughs> because nothing's official yet. It is. Redesigning a website, a website is incredibly hard work. I'm glad. I'm proud to say uh, that I have never had any design authority over Boing Boing. Nice. And, uh, it's it's been great for my quality of life because you know design is such a thankless job you do the best job you can do the well, most perfect job is it, and your colleagues or your users or your funders or your oh everybody or hates change somebody's gonna yeah. hate change are you is this so, on your shoulders jenny no you no, mean, that's what i'm saying i hope mark some, and 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 cory kind of okay. help out here uh i I'm probably already in trouble for saying all that I have. But <laughs> I mean, that Rob guy's got to do something. So uh, Rob and Mark are really uh, the design team yeah. at Boing Boing. They're yeah. both uh, just obviously incredibly talented visual thinkers. They're artists, yes. They're, you know, Mark is a great illustrator. He designed the original Boing Boing logo. Rob uh, just has this beautiful kind of wry British sense of humor that comes through in these visual jokes that he makes. Did you ever, did you ever see, we, he, he took like a Shutterstock image of a keyboard and you know how there's, there's sort of a trope in news that you'll take the image of the keyboard in Shutterstock 
and put uh, put like the word porn over the uh, return <laughs> key. And that'll be like a safe stock art that you can use for right. an article about porn. Right. So I used to get in fights with Rob uh, in Slack about this. He, he, would, he would like get bored one morning and every single post that anybody put up would be accompanied by that keyboard stock art, <laughs> but with like hamsters or like hamburgers or taxes or like Microsoft. <laughs> He'd come up with these funny things that he would... Uh, that takes some of the sting the out of it with a little but sense yeah, of like humor. That's, yeah. that's obviously, that's just a silly thing that he does, but that's a genius mind at work. I agree. And that's, so, by the way, why Slack is so them. popular, because you can do stuff like that. <laughs> you can do stuff like that without yeah. uh, email. E right. Every time you send an email, you amplify pain in someone right. else's life. I, that, that, that's really just how I think about it. So even if you're replying all to show somebody a cute visual joke that you made, like what I was just describing, just by virtue of the fact that you're telling them that by email, you're amplifying a little bit of misery. So everybody out there watching the show, do a stranger a good turn today and don't send that email. <laughs> I'm with you. It's a nice email. Just don't send <clears throat> it. Don't send that email. Don't yeah. press the send. Press you can it. write it. Don't press send. Don't you press it. I was looking at your uh, uh, beautiful article about Oliver Sacks, who passed away uh, at the age of 82 uh, this week. And it's this is the new Boing Boing layout for a long form. And it looks great. I love it. I you hope like you're not, it? Yeah. Oh, good. We I, do, too. Yeah, I hope you're not going to change that. <laughs> no. Yeah, I, I think that works well. Good. Yeah, I think it's really good. I, I love being able to tell stories seamlessly with other people's, you know, tweets and Instagrams and things sort right. of woven into it. So instead of sort of using these old journalism um, format tricks to get other people's voices in... We can simply copy and paste in the most transparent way. Yeah. And then we've incorporated, we've woven other people's view of the world into our stories. I just, <clears throat> I'm so glad that this medium exists in exactly the way that it exists today for us. I think it's, there's just never been a, a more interesting time to be alive. Uh, well, actually, and the word use of uh, the word medium is interesting because this reminds me a little bit of medium, Ev Williams' uh, uh, blog platform. I'm not sure what to call it. So it's a thought catalog for... Uh 30-year-olds. That's it. Thought catalog for 30-year-olds. Um, but it has, it's similar in the way that it, it, it does allow you to easily incorporate other, ri it's rich in that sense. Um, and yeah, yeah, this is very, I really have. Uh, hey, you, you scrolled by uh, a little house ad that we had for a weekend of wonder, I think at some point. Can I, can I share about that now? What is the Talk? weekend of wonder? Let me find the house ad first. Yeah, you, Although well, I keep getting stuck on this picture of Oliver Sacks. Uh, taken uh, oh when he was a young More man. Like Oliver Sex, am I right? Hot, hot, <laughs> hot. And uh, I interviewed uh, Oliver uh, in the um, mid '80s when he was about my age, late '50s, early '60s. And he had a big white beard and big red suspenders, and he had a very jolly uh, demeanor. Boy, if I'd seen this picture, I'd go, "Wow, <laughs> wow!" He was a great man and uh, uh, yeah. really uh, an inspiration. You know, I think uh, Mark and Pesco, my my two colleagues, Mark and Pesco, really followed his work yeah. much more closely. But uh, I, I, a lot of what I know about him was actually through Steve Silberman. Uh -huh. you know, Steve did that wonderful interview with him uh, more than 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And it was actually through Steve that I learned that Oliver was about to uh, publish that op-ed in the New York Times saying, oh. I'm, I'm dying of a cancer recurrence. Yep. I remember Steve told me at the time, it was it was like right before the book came out, and he said, you know, there's something else that he's going to be coming out about in a really big way, and that's he'll he'll talk in his last book about his his sexuality. He came out as gay in his book, and I just it's so cool. Like Steve Silberman has talked a lot recently about how being a sexual minority. And being kind of a a, a brain minority, um, there are some parallels. So he he has this new mm. book out about uh, about autism, basically. And Oliver Sacks is a big reason mm -hmm. that we think of autism not as uh, w without some of the the stigma right. and the revulsion that people treated folks with autism yep. in in years gone by. 
If you get a chance to read his uh, first piece, one of his early pieces, The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat, it was later mm. turned into a, a great book. Um, but the original piece gives you a sense of uh, what an amazing uh, person. You know, St Steve Silverman was. tweeted this thing the other day. He said, I, I, I uh, asked uh, Oliver Sacks why sage plants have fuzzy leaves. And I've been thinking about this every day, Leo, because I'm growing sage down in that little garden. I think oh. I, you probably saw a little pot of seedlings. And Oliver Sacks said, they have fuzzy leaves because they like it. <laughs> that sounds like the right answer, I must yeah. say. That's wonderful. Um, let's talk about the Week of Wonder. Uh, Boing the Boing's of Week wonder. of Wonder in association with Baby Tattoo. Cool publishing company. Yeah, so our, our Weekend of Wonder, this is our first ever Weekend of Wonder. And it's, we don't want to call it words that people usually use for gatherings of tech people. We're going to call it an extravaganza. I mean, it's really like, it's kind of like a cruise or a guided tour. I want to go. That just stays in one place, more or less. It's at the Mission Inn, this beautiful uh, historic place in Riverside, California. It's a little bit like the Winchester Mystery House, if you've mm. ever been there. And we're going to have all kinds of fun guests that you're scrolling by right now. John Edgar Park, Michael Boris, Mark Frauenfelder. We have Martin and Olivia Olson from Adventure Time. Uh, amazing, amazing people. Uh, scroll down a little. Oh yeah, the artist Coop and uh, Andrew Main of Don't Trust Andrew Main on A and E, uh, Parody Carlo, and I think there's this really cool restaurant uh, husband and wife team here in Los Angeles called Starry Kitchen, and they're like basically internet punk chefs. They recently did this thing. They, they don't have a standing restaurant right now, so they did a pop up via Uber. So everybody knows about Starry Kitchen, and you could order Starry Kitchen via Uber. Oh, that's and there's a nice. video game themed restaurant in Echo Park wow. where they're going to have snacks. And their big thing is these uh, crispy tofu balls. And the guy uh, Nguyen Tran is his name, the husband and wife uh, Vietnamese American duo. And they uh, they always talk about put my balls in your mouth. <laughs> and, and so there's going to be a lot of ball jokes and a lot of good food, uh, magic. There's going to be recreational lock picking. We might uh, teach you how to walk slack line. We're going to lock some children in the trunk of a car. And, uh, <laughs> no, we'll you're not. Teach them. Yeah, why not? Maybe. 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 We're also, and, and then they, they can they can do the recreational lock picking to figure out how to get out. And then if they don't get out, you know, screw them. <laughs> when, when uh, and then, we're, we're going to have show and tell. It's coming up soon. So, it's September, uh, what, 18th, 19th, and 20th. September 18th to the 20th, uh, wow.boingboing.net, w-o-w.boingboing.net. And really, each person who comes to the event is going to be the star of the event. I, it's it, not a hokey thing. If you can imagine Boing Boing being brought to life, isn't what I just described to you basically Boing Boing in real life? And, and like this place, the Mission Inn, there's these crazy catacombs and secret lairs, and we're going to get these wacky guided tours of half-truths, kind of like John Hodgman does where he just makes it up, but it sounds so fun, you believe him? Who knows? Hodgman might even show up. Hodgman should uh, show up. This is this is made for Hodgman. And, and Baby Tattoo does all these uh, cool events that involve art and outs uh, like lowbrow Southern California uh, hot rod art and, and stuff like that. All meals are going to be taken care of for you. Um, and we're going to basically... I mean, you know what it's about for me? It's about staying up all night, sitting on the roof in beautiful Southern California weather under these stars that you can see so clearly out in Riverside, doing card tricks and gossiping about YouTube. Only 100 people will be there. Yeah, it's going to be small. Very I, I really small. I want to do a bunch of these. This is a lot more fun than chasing down display ads. Man. I like I like this idea. <laughs> and, if, and yeah, it's a way of supporting, of course, Boing Boing. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. $1,500. I want to say that up front so people don't rush there and say, but oh. It, in, it includes your lodging. It includes a lot of the food. And it includes a, a lot of cool extras. So it's not. Um, For a three-day you know, weekend, a that's pretty good. Yeah. A lot of conferences where yeah. you pay that just to get in. But right. you're, you're getting all kinds of stuff. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't so think that's fun. overpriced, but I thought I'd just say it before people rush over. Yeah. And only a hundred people, so don't waste too much time. Wow. More dot exclusive boing. than the Apple uh, iPhone. Uh, much app. more. Yeah. <laughs> no, seven thousand people here, Bucko. It's kind of like sounds a little like a. Because we don't have the budget for that. Sounds like an organized food camp. It sounds like fun. Wow. We, we, 
we, I, I don't want to compare it to anything because we've been to all of those events. Right. We love them. They are exactly what they are. And I think we just want to take little bits of all the events that we wish had happened and never have yet. And that definitely includes a lot of the weird crap that we're shoehorning into this <laughs> three-day extravaganza of fun. And why, you aren't come, you, why aren't you uh, listed early. as a special guest? You'll be there, right? Yeah. I will be there. And I'm. you know what I'm going to show? Uh, this is I'm breaking news on Twit. I'm going to be bringing a really cool book that I bought on eBay for 70 bucks. And this book was published in 1855. Wow. And it's a pictorial guide to travels throughout California del Norte, otherwise known as what we call California now, before it was separated from Mexico. It was all del Norte. If it was north yeah. of Mexico. Yeah. Very cool. That's going to be fun. We're each going to have show and tell. Yeah, I might bring some of my kraut. <laughs> and there may be sauerkraut. <laughs> and we're back to the well, Now I'm coming. I'm coming. Back. If there's going to be kraut, there, and Alex I'm, I'm is not. Way. Alex Wilhelm says, I, no, "I'm not going anywhere near." I'm registered right now. Oh, wait! Well, I got to tell you one more thing. We're gonna, one of the meals is uh, in at a taco shop, right? And the guy who makes the tacos also collects weird scrap metal and junk and makes these uh, Gaudi style wow. uh, sculptures and he's got this whole sculpture garden oh, so we're going to be eating tacos that this dude makes in his crazy outsider art junk sculpture garden and if that's not boing boing i don't know what's boing -boing. <laughs> it sounds really great <laughs> sounds like a lot of fun wow.boingboing.net yep thank you for uh telling us about it mm -hmm. we uh, we're going to get back with more uh, the tech news google has an announcement on the 29th apparently that's the rumor uh, I could tell you a little bit about that, and a little uh, there's a little controversy over the on hub router that Google announced a couple of uh, weeks ago. We'll talk about that. But first, if you missed anything this week on Twit, you missed a lot. Let's take a look. Previously on Twit, this is called the no phone. You know, it's the new phone season right it now. It is. Gonna, it feels good in oh, the it's hands. Good looking. <laughs> is it waterproof? It, is it runs all operating no. systems the same. Yes. Which is not at all. Right. Before you buy. This one's pretty impressive. This is the brand new Galaxy Note 5. This is easily the best looking, the best usability. I would say it's the best phone I've ever had. The new screensavers. My question is, what advice would you guys give to someone like me trying to grow their ferret channel? If you've got a <laughs> camera that can either zoom out a little bit or put a wide angle lens on it, you, you, you may actually find that it gets a little less nauseating for your audience to watch the video. He was just jealous, that's it. Tech News Today. Researchers at the University of California at Berkeley are programming a robot the old-fashioned way. They're sending it to preschool. The robot is being taught to learn about the world and solve problems more analogous to how children learn to solve tasks. But it will use the cloud and let the robots teach each other things, which is less terrifying than it sounds. Twit. It keeps going and going and going. I don't think you want to let the robots talk to one another. I, I, I think that's I, extremely... That is that is the beginning of a, of a, of a scary idea. movie. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Like, uh, big week okay. ahead. Mike Elgin, our news director. What's ahead this week? I think I know. The big event this week is an announcement by Apple on Wednesday, September 9th in San Francisco. We're expecting new iPhones, a new Apple TV, and new iPads. We'll cover it live starting at 9.45 a.m. Pacific on Wednesday at twit.tv slash live. Back to you, Leo. Mike Elgin and Tech News Today, Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 1700 UTC. Your daily dose of tech News. Before we get back to the tech news this week with Alex Wilhelm of TechCrunch.com, Jenny Jardin of BoingBoing.net, Alex Lindsay of PixelCore, uh, time to talk about Braintree. I want to talk to the mobile developers out there. If you've been looking for some way to incorporate online payments into your website or your, uh, or your mobile app, you got to check out Braintree. Amazing. We talked to uh, just the other day to Juan Benitez. He's the CTO of Braintree. And he talked a little bit about the companies they work with, uh, the companies that use their checkout system. Listen. We get to work with some really cool people. We get to support, you know, the Uber, Hotel Tonight, Airbnb, Eventbrite, GitHub, Slack. I mean, these are some of the best innovators out there. And also some of them, like GitHub and Slack, providing the platforms of innovation, frankly. To have the opportunity to work with these folks and to try to delight them is a great challenge. It's a great opportunity. We, we learn a lot from our customers, and we just hope that we can return the value to them. If you think about it, I mean, what the, the secret sauce for Uber is the, the easy way to pay. You just you get the end of the ride, you get out of the car. That's Braintree doing it. Braintree has made payment experience 
seamless, easy, magical, and you can add that same experience to your app with excellent customer service, easy integration. We're just talking 10 lines of code. Uh, and they work with every platform, PHP and Ruby and Python, and, you know, just, uh, Node, uh, JavaScript, jQuery. Braintree gets you ready to receive payments quickly and easily. And they've got great support, fast payouts. So they're prepared. You'll be prepared as your company grows from your first dollar to your billionth dollar. Braintree, helping to solve the problem of mobile cart abandonment by offering the best-in-class mobile checkout experience. You can find out more. Go to their sandbox at braintreepayments.com slash twit. Play around with it. It's a full-stack payment solution. And I should really say it supports every form of pay, including, of course, Apple Pay, PayPal, Bitcoin, Venmo, credit cards. And as new forms of payment arrive, like Android Pay, it'll support those too, all with one easy integration and superior fraud protection and customer service and fast payments. So you'd be crazy to write this yourself. To find out more and to get your first $50,000 in transactions fee-free, braintreepayments.com slash twit. We thank them so much for their support. All right, I really tried to I really tried to stir up some anger, some angst over Google's new logo. Nothing. Meh. Nah. Nah. Nothing. How about the Nexus event? The rumor is September 29th, we've been waiting for a Nexus 5. It's really interesting. I mean, IFA has been going on all week long in Berlin. Samsung uh, had announcements. Uh, actually, Sony's announcements were probably the most interesting. Uh, Apple's announcements next week. For some reason, Google has decided to do the Nexus. I guess they don't really even care if they sell them. The Nexus <laughs> event, like, yeah, we'll do it later. Um, They'll do it when they're good and ready. When they're good and ready, there's a new Nexus 5 supposedly made by LG. That's the rumor. A larger device, a Nexus 6 replacement built by Huawei. Um, no idea what they'll charge. I think one of the things uh, that held this up is that they wanted to put the new version of Android on there, Marshmallow. Um, Google spokesperson said, I have no comment. Might be the first time, I think it'd be the first time you can get a Huawei phone uh, officially in the U.S., right? You'd have to go, you'd have to go to Alibaba or somewhere to buy a Huawei phone in the U.S. before. I'm uh, so excited. I've been waiting for that for so long. That's what I've wanted. Really? A Huawei? No. 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 no not at all. <laughs> no. How about the Moto X Pure Edition? I, mean, I ordered mine on uh, Wednesday. Did you, are you going to get one of them? No. no. You, you don't care. Nobody, nobody cares. You're all iPhone users. You don't care. I, it's it's true. I mean, like, this is why I up the media, man. We're but I got wood. This thing has wood. It it has leather or wood on the back. Is now how much would you <laughs> there, pay? There, and then we have a title. <laughs> I, I would pay negative money for it. They'd have to pay me to pay that. I don't want leather on my phone. You, I want a, you don't want a leather I phone? I do not want <laughs> or leather wall. Really, I don't want leather at all. I, work out with like, I can just pass on the entire concept. Yeah, actually, when we know Jenny doesn't, she's a vegan. But, uh, I was a vegan... Uh, and then I was diagnosed with cancer, and then I thought, well, that didn't work out too yeah, Maybe I'll eat some more meat. <laughs> All right. No, the truth is I, I still eat a very plant-centric diet, yeah. but I wouldn't call myself a vegan. All right. But you wouldn't mind a wooden phone. Ah, come on. <laughs> oh, I can't even Thank get you, you. interested. You come, you. come out here and homestead with me and ferment <laughs> some cabbage? <laughs> Uh, how about these new Xperia phones? Actually, there was a funny article in uh, Mashable. Sony, for reasons no one understands, announced a 4K display on the uh, Z5 Premium. Something like 800 and something. 800 PPI. dots per inch, yeah. Pixels per inch. Yeah. That makes absolutely um, no sense. Makes no sense. And here's the problem with it is, the reason it makes no sense is, number one, is like when we think of a fine magazine, we're, you know, that as sharp as we can think of it is... Three or four hundred, you know, three hundred DPI. I remember DPI. when the Apple Laser Writer came out. Three hundred DPI it was like, oh, you can never see any dots. And 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 the and the issue is, is that it maybe a little bit more than that or whatever. But when you increase the, when you have these crazy resolutions for the phone, that affects your battery life. It affects. It affects your Hello? battery life. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, it affects. <laughs> it affects battery life. It affects. Uh, um, you know how much you can do with the graphics processor. It affects the kind of the way the games play because now every every developer now has to develop for this to get it that sharp. You know that, now they, they may be pixel doubling or quadrupling or something like that, but it's still well. So we don't know because it's not out. It will be out till later yeah. in the year. But uh, it's I did read one report that said that in fact most of the time it's 1080p. Right. It does do pixel doubling as Apple does with right, its right. high DPI displays. You only see the 4K, the the 800 
whatever it is, dots per inch, uh, when you're looking at video or, or, or movies. They're also putting Sony's uh, upscaler. They have a very good upscaler on their TV. Right. Supposedly, that technology will also be in the phone. So you'll be able to look at HD or, or even SD content and, and, and see it'll look I, really I don't, good. And I have to Who admit, cares? I don't know if I could be able to see the difference between 4K and... I mean, I can see the difference between 4K on a regular screen, between 4K and 1080p. I don't know if I could do it on a... Oh. The funniest thing, a piece by Raymond Wong and Mashable, he talked about the journalists who, during the Sony event, they're, you know, they're champing at the bit to get over there, look at that 4K phone. Uh, before the event even ends, they're starting to rush the demo tables. They're exclaiming. They're looking at the demos. Wow, isn't that a great screen? The Sony reps are standing there nodding. Um, he uh, he had to wait in line to get over there. He says, uh, I was quick and nimble. Uh, I didn't even sit down, but I bolted, but I wasn't quick enough. Dozens of other reporters got there first, so I had to wait, watch them go crazy over these this 4K display, except it wasn't the 4K display. It was a 1080p <laughs> display. They They had the premium in another room locked down. The Sony reps didn't bother to correct anybody. It just shows you. I mean, these guys are looking at a 1080p display saying, wow. That 4K really looks good. And 1080p on a little phone looks, it looks amazing. Good. It, 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 it does. It, it looks great. It kind of underscores you probably can't uh, tell the difference. Sony had booth attendants guarding the premium devices and no touching allowed. So you couldn't really play with the Z5. they just barely work. Premium. That's usually what happens when they say no touching allowed. Yeah. It's like, ah, this, is, this is too this early. On the graphics process. He went and asked a Sony rep. Uh, he said, I thought the Z5 premium was on the table. The rep said... Oh, yeah, there's a Z5 on the table. And then talked to somebody else and said, no, oh, I'm sorry, no, there's no premiums on the table. They're only in that room. So everybody was fooled, which, which I, I'm not going to mock the journalists. It just shows you, you can't tell the difference between 1080p and, and 4K. Nevertheless, I'll buy one because I'm... It's, 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 it's what you do. Built that way. And it comes in gold. Not real gold, just um, golden. Rose gold? Rose gold. No, no, that's the iPhone. Are you going to get the rose gold? Of course you are, Jenny. I would get gold gold. Gold gold. Um, it's hard to really gin up any excellent about this stuff at all. <laughs> I'm trying well, I, so we're just, hard. We're just stuck in this, we're stuck in the Android, you know, like smartphone spec war still. And yeah. so to see a 4K display is cool, but I mean, like, it's not out yet. It may not work that well. There's not a lot of content for it. Games aren't ready for it. So it's like a data point, but I'm not going like, to Brush online now and reserve right. one. Just a data cool. Point. Yeah. But yeah, it's just, you know. Samsung's Gear S2. Samsung's sticking with Tizen, which is interesting. Uh, I think they've done Android Wear watches, but their newest watches, including the Gear S2, which looks pretty good. Uh, we had a review uh, yesterday on the show from Slash Gear. Uh, uses a bezel instead of a, a, a I like a the knob. bezel. I like the bezel better than the knob. Kind of does say. the same thing. It does the same thing, but I like the fact that it's yeah. easier to get to. Um. It looks nice. It's round. I like round watches. Um, I don't know. Are, do you? Do you? Any of you wear an Apple Watch? I have an Apple Watch. No. Do you? Do you like your Apple Watch? I, I, You're not I wearing it right back. now. I am. Oh, you are. Yeah. What do you got in a rubber yeah. case? I got in a little rubber case. That's I'm cool. I, 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 I'm I, tough I move, on it. I move road cases around. I mean, it's not going to survive otherwise. But the um, uh, yeah. Tizen is is a, I couldn't go back. Samsung's own operating system, and there's so there's. I guess it will work with Android and iPhone, but there's some question of whether is there really room for a third smartwatch operating system out there. Well, I don't think at least what we've seen so far. I don't think that the operating system has to work very hard on the watch. I mean, it's they all do they, roughly they, the same thing. Yeah, right? they, they, there's just a handful of things they need them to do. Right. I mean, it's but. Um, I, I wasn't sure if I was going to stick with it when I got the phone, when I got the watch, but now I don't think I could give it up because I'm, I'm just so used to being able to look down and decide, no, I'm not going to answer that call. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's mostly that's so, really so, it. Uh, that's, that's the number it's one just notifications. Reason. Then is that, is that really your killer use case? Is just the fact that you can well, you can down talk to this. You can talk it? to it. You can say send Alex Wilhelm a text. Responding on text, responding, you know, being able to respond with. Okay. I wish I could pre-program my responses into the Apple. I mean, like, you know, like it comes up with a bunch of them and I wish there was like four automatic ones. Like, right. You know, screw that. You know, you know, or, or uh, sue them or, you know, whatever. <laughs> sue them. You say that a lot. Huh? Sue them. Sue them. Sue them. No, no. I, no I, but the, um, but I, I, you know, I wish that like yes, no was always 
two of the options that yeah, I have. They Not, should be I don't want to be cute. I just want yes or no. And those yeah. are the first two that should be the response for everything because um, I usually don't like to respond with any other words. Here's Chris Davies' thumb uh, twiddling that. I really like that. I really bezel. I think that. that's a good UI, frankly. I think it's a better UI than... than uh... Yeah. It's, it seems more natural. All right. I don't know why I'm bringing all this stuff up. Nobody cares. You guys didn't even buy an Apple Watch. We're, we're too cool for Apple Watches. You Are know. you? Do you wear a wristwatch oh, yeah. of any kind? I have a smartphone. Why would I need extra guys? It's kind of my attitude. I think, I, yeah, but I think that if you buy the Apple Watch, it means you're less cool. So it's the first Apple product uh, in my view that actually makes you less fun and interesting if you have one. Because I presume you're kind of just a boring Apple fan. Really Sorry, hurts. everyone. <laughs> this is why I have so many friends. Oh, sarcasm. Uh, all right. You th I thought this was going to be such a... J you never know. I thought this was going to be such a jam-packed week because we had all those EFA announcements. And uh, unfortunately, we have people who are just, just not consumers. You guys are not like just rapacious consumers. You, it's because we're thoughtful. all too old, Leo. Why didn't you book some millennials yeah. on this show? Oh, I got to have the new thing. <laughs> <laughs> I made a big mistake, a big error. I'm Let's just, I'm at a place in my life where I'm more excited about things that I grow or ferment. I I <laughs> am kind of with you. I, I think we got so sucked into uh, these shiny objects that we kind of left let, let life pass you by. And I think maybe a brush, a brush with the Grim Reaper, maybe is a good way to focus the attention uh, on what I really matters. Definitely recommend that anybody who wants to figure out their priorities <laughs> yeah. in life get cancer. Yeah, <laughs> it's the next thing. It's the oh, next. I feel like I'm in the, the waiting room. I feel like quick. it's just. I'm just waiting to get cancer. That's what I'm doing now. That's oh, all. don't say that, Leo. I can joke about it, but don't joke about it. Well, I don't mean it as a joke. I, I, I feel like that's just it's just inevitable at some point. And, uh, no, no, sooner no, no, or no, later. No? No, well, Leo's it's not like, inevitable. Leo, you're like 75, right, Leo? Yeah. Yeah, my yeah, prostate exactly. is the size good. of a, a grapefruit. TMI. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel this this do, you know? no longer feels like a safe space. I'm sorry. <laughs> My, I'm sorry. It is a safe I, space. You know, I feel like the patriarchy is getting a little out of control. Oh, here. God, no. I might have to retreat into my kitten Not room. Not the patriarchy. Do you have a kitten room? <laughs> yes. Really? Yes, I do. I have a room full of kittens. Uh, in fact, it's it's just right behind this window. Are you an uh, evil right Are there. you an evil genius? <laughs> no, I'm just the queen of the internet. <laughs> <laughs> I have a kitten room. You know, that we have two great. kittens. That's practically a kitten room, the way they move around. A kitten room would be really great. Kitten I mean, room. really think about it. How many kittens would you need to fill a kitten room? You need eight to ten. Depends on how big they eight are. Eight to ten kittens. Yeah. Eight to oh, ten? Yeah. Eight to ten. ten? I'm thinking hundreds. Mm -hmm. Really? Is that all? Eight to ten? But then you'd have I to... Would, no, I think I eight to ten would be enough. I would love to have a room that was filled with stuffed, fluffy, uh, small toy kittens. Yeah. Wouldn't that be great? Like you could just... Like a bouncy castle, but it's just full of... Tiny furry. I saw your kittens. Instagram of you lying naked in your squash patch. I feel like I you... wasn't naked. I was wearing a dress. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be really creepy and bad. That'd be a bad, bad move. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. No. It's that yeah. patriarchy. It sneaks up on me. I can't help it. It's just, it was so fun. I, I was just lying down there this morning with my head in the dirt and these vines crawling around my neck and it was just... It's it a great so picture. You you look like Poison Ivy in the Batman. It was, it was so much more fun than trying to figure out which new watch to buy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm with you on that. Much more fun. Lie squash with your squash. Squash is forever. You know what? I don't need to recharge my squash. No. It, it, it does not require any you recharging do not. at all. Do you have a spiralizer? Oh, my God. Yes. Aren't they the awesome? First on, I was the first person on the Internet to become crazy about spiralizers. Spiralizers? I, my daughter told me about spiralizers. Darth and I on Twitter have long conversations about how great spiralizers are. You know, Darth, the guy who uh, does all the, the cute animal stuff? Yeah. Is for, I assume he's a guy, but Darth might be a woman. Now, do you know. have a, one of those big spiralizers with a crank, or you just have one of the little con conical spiralizers? Oh man! If you're gonna go, you gotta go all the way. So I, yeah, I have a, a a crank one. 
Oh, I wow. Make, I make zucchini pasta oh, yeah. with it. Well, that's I what I want to, that's what I got it for, because I thought it'd be great for great. pasta, because I make a great spaghetti sauce, a great yeah. bolognese, but I don't want to eat the pasta, so I thought if I could make zucchini into pasta. Oh, listen, you, if this is a, is this a food podcast? Because I'm, I'm going to get real with the food. <laughs> yeah, what you need to do, you, you, uh, some people like to take the skin off so that it looks more like believable pasta, so that it can pass as pasta. Um, you just sprinkle a little bit of salt on the zucchini mm. strips and let them sweat a little bit. Mm. And then, I don't know, after like a half an hour or something, you just pat them dry. And That's uh, what I have to do. So yeah. I do that with eggplant, too. You put a little salt and you, it, 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 it draws the moisture out. I need to do that because it gets kind of soggy if you don't do that. So let's go, oh, and there goes uh, Jenny. She's probably w was wandering down to get some <laughs> zucchini to spiral. We're going to get her a better Wi-Fi connection. <laughs> let's take a break. Uh -huh. I don't know where I... And uh, talk more. I love my spiralizer. I want one now. No, I don't have like this. I have a cheap one that's just a conical thing. It looks like one of those uh, bar implements for a shot glass, and it's got a little razor-sharp uh, edges in it, and you just stick the zucchini in there. But I think this... Uh, Anyway, our show. <laughs> this, is a bit of a weird, I, this is a weird moment on Twitter. This is like, weird all around. This whole show is weird. Yeah, I'm going to give it a weird out of 10, definitely. Okay. Full weird points. Okay. Uh, our show today brought to you by audible.com. We love audiobooks. You know that. Don't yes. have to tell you twice. Except I do. Why aren't you member a member of audible.com yet? That's my question for you. On your way to work, on your way to school, Wherever you go, don't be a fool. Get audible. <laughs> Did you I, just make that up right now? No, there? I have a jingle. That's somewhere. impressive. Um, <laughs> <laughs> can you sing it next time? Well, I can find it, actually. Better, better I, I can find the audible jingle. I have it here somewhere. Um, uh, audible is a bookstore of 180,000 audiobooks, fabulous audiobooks, uh, fiction, nonfiction. Uh, I'm just a huge fan. Oh, I've got to read this. I'm meaning to read this. Have you read this Ed Catmull's book yet? No. Creativity, Creativity Inc. He's, of course, the president of Pixar. Ooh, I want to listen Was to president that. all through the Steve Jobs era. And many agree. I just read um, Becoming Steve Jobs, uh, the latest biography of Steve. And in that book, they talk a lot about him and really agree that if it weren't for Ed Catmull, uh, Pixar wouldn't be the company it is because you need a, a leader at the company who supports the creatives. And creatives are notoriously difficult to kind of herd. They're like a room full of cats. <laughs> gonna, it's gonna like gonna a kitten it. room. Yeah, yeah, it's like a kitten uh, room. And he apparently uh, just brilliant at it. Anyway, he's written a book called Overcoming the Unseen Forces That Stand in the Way of True Inspiration. And I hear it's wonderful. That's that's going to be next on my list. Right now, um, I my next book that I, uh, I've already downloaded, and I can go to my Audible uh, library and show you, is something I, I maybe Jenny has heard of this. Um, yeah. Shi Xin Liu is a, a Chinese science fiction author who is being much celebrated. He's written a trilogy. First book is called The Three Body Problem. And I've been dying to read this. That just the English translation just recently came out. Have you read it yet, Jenny? No. Nope. I've heard very good things about it. <laughs> Set against a backdrop of China's cultural revolution, a secret military project sends signals into space to establish contact with aliens. An alien civilization on the brink of destruction captures the signal and plans to invade Earth. Apparently, though, of course, because they're so distant, we have a lot of time to prepare. Like that centuries. That sounds like a really cool story. I would read that. Yeah. Uh, this is the first volume. The second volume has also been recorded. I think Audible is currently working on the third volume, Dead End. Dark Forest is the second. Uh... I've got the first two. I will give you a report as soon as awesome. uh, I finish those. But uh, those are, I can't wait to read those. I've been reading a lot lately on Audible because I've been doing traveling. And I don't, when I'm in the plane, I need an audio book. I put my headphones in and I relax and I listen to an audio book. Um, I just listened to one of the great courses. These are great too on Audible. College lectures on pretty much every subject under the sun. Uh, and you can just, you know, get these lectures, listen to them. Here's one I bet you would like from uh, Professor Mark yeah. Muesi. Practicing mm -hmm. Mindfulness, an Introduction to Meditation. This is on my list, my to-do list of things. To meditate? Yeah. You should meditate on that. I should think about <laughs> it. I should meditate on it. Perhaps I will act upon it. 
tell you what I'm going to do right now, give you two books for free. Maybe oh. this will be one of them. All you got to do is go. <laughs> Jenny's all excited. Audible.com slash twit2. You'll sign up for the platinum plan. That's two books a month. It includes the Daily Digest of the New Wall Street Journal or the New York Times, uh, which is also great to listen to as you want to catch up on your news in the car. Uh, and uh, you can cancel any time in the first 30 days. Pay nothing, but keep those two books. They're yours as a little thank you. But I think really the point is to get you listening, because I think once you start listening to Audible, it's pretty hard to stop. It's a really can, can I put in a uh, an unscripted, unpaid plug for Audible? Yes, you can. Uh, I moved here to my sofa because I was going to be cute with my dog, uh, but then he ran off. <laughs> oh, man, Chappy. <laughs> Maybe Chappy will come back. I'll... I'll put a stake in my hand or something. <laughs> um, so I really, I really like Audible. And I have listened to a number of books on Audible because when, when you have cancer and when you're going through treatment, this is how I first got turned on to Audible. Um, it's really hard to concentrate. Yeah. It's really hard to concentrate long enough to finish a chapter, let little, little right. a whole book. But having somebody read to you is really calming, and there's there's just a whole different part of your brain that gets used when you know when you're listening to somebody read to you. So I actually did listen to a lot of guided meditations. Smart. Um, Jack Cornfield is this uh, oh, mindfulness. I know he's, Jack because awesome. I go to Spirit Rock. He's up here. Well, you go to Spirit Rock. Oh, he's wonderful. Yeah. My my cancer therapist was the first to turn me on to Spirit Rock and how wonderful their programs oh. are. I've never been there, but oh, it's, it's, it's like. Just a really good brain exercise. It's nearby. It's over it was, here in Nicosia. I, I, used to, I used to live right. I used to live in Nicosia. So yeah, right around the corner. Yeah. And Jack, of course, uh, I don't know if he was the founder, but he's there all the time. Lectures mm -hmm. there, and he's wonderful. Super just cool a beautiful guy. Beautiful guy. Yeah. You no, know, there's a lot of there's a lot of BS self help stuff out there, and he teaches old school meditation. I like it, but I, I download his stuff. I've Audible all the time. Yeah, I've meditated to Jack. He's he's a he's a he's it's great. Really I can actually imitate the audio, the audible audiobook <laughs> intro. This Do audio it. book is brought to you by <laughs> audible.com. <laughs> I don't know who that guy is, but I, I have to laugh each time. Uh, at the end, he goes, Thank you for listening to Audible. <laughs> I just laugh every time. By the way, the only dog in your house blessed by the Dalai Lama. Yes, it's true. My boyfriend and my dog and I went uh, to see His Holiness the Dalai Lama, and we were in like a basement underneath a hotel with all these Secret Service guys, and His Holiness was coming in. And they opened the doors, and there was all these really serious dudes and dogs and weapons and stuff. And he looked at Chappie. I was holding Chappie. And he looked, Chappie's chewing my hair. And, uh, and then he went right for Chappie, and like, shook him under the chin like this. <laughs> And go like that, and wow. Jackie had licked him, and then he came up to me, and he went like that. Oh, that's pretty wow. handsy for someone you don't even know. It's like, hey, yeah. that's to sweet. Now. That's, I mean, after that, uh, Vladimir Putin, and then that's it, right? Everybody, you'll have. No, I think I could probably get along pretty well with Vladimir Putin <laughs> if I was hanging out with Chappie. Was that on the show or was that before the show? Because otherwise, <laughs> people are very confused. <laughs> I think that was well, before the show. There's a whole Tumblr. And I, I got this from uh, Boing Boing initially. Yeah. Dedicated to pictures of Putin posing with animals. Just like I am right now. And I just feel like you and Putin have something in common. <laughs> Our love That's probably the only thing in common. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Just the one thing. <laughs> Vladimir Putin with I animals. I mentioned, <laughs> I mentioned that there he is with a, uh, a dwarf horse. Here he is, topless with a dog. Here he is. Prefer to be called small horses, Leo. I'm sorry, little horses. <laughs> well, I am the again. The patriarchy reasserts itself. I'm feeling very unsafe. I need to retire <laughs> to my kitchen so room. So sorry. Did you hear the thing about the raisins this week? By the way, the you, the California guess, raisins. No, um, little people of America, midget raisins. Here, I'm just trying to get. I'm, I'm really messing with you. We call them little raisins. Come on, Jenny. Even I know that. Yeah. They used to be called midget raisins, but the little people of America <laughs> um, had a petition to Good. change it. And the that's USDA fine. changed it. I think it's really cool. That's. I think that's sensitive. Yeah. The reason I brought up the uh, Dalai Lama is because he has, of course, many books. 
and yeah. has many books on audible.com. Oh, and they're great, and he's really fun to listen to. Yeah, it get you know, there's uh, here's his introduction to Buddhism so you can hear his voice because Martin oh, Sheen oh. narrates Beyond Religion. I don't know if Martin Sheen really has the the, the Dalai Lama voice. <laughs> well, the guy's alive. So listen to his back, voice. I think combine. So these are these are lectures from as a foundation. His holiness. Then Jeffy, it's your buddy. <laughs> He chucked you under the chin. <laughs> Look at that. It's that's a cute shot. That's a cute okay. shot. Everybody should go to audible.com. There are two books there with your name on them, and there's so many choices, 180,000. And you can see just a little sampling, science fiction, fiction, nonfiction, lectures, uh, the latest uh, in the Millennium uh, series, The Girl in the Spider Web. There's so much great stuff. Audible.com slash twit2 to get your first two books. Free. And wait, the other part of their thing is audible.com, wherever you are. <laughs> wherever you are. Are they lying on their back like you are, right? <laughs> You're the five million people. Let's all track. lie on our backs and do the show now. Let's okay, relax. Much better mood. We will cheer so up. Get high right now. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, actually. By no, the I know you're not. That's the funny thing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Dan Lyons. Any of you know Dan Lyons? I know Dan Lyons. He's a I funny guy. Him. Love Dan Lyons. He was the fake Steve Jobs. Uh, wrote, uh, was a writer for, um, was it Newsweek? I'm trying to remember. Or maybe it was Time Magazine. Um, he, I saw him uh, a few years ago, and I said, where are you working these days, Dan? He was working at HubSpot. And I said, Dan, you're a journalist. What are you doing at HubSpot? Getting paid. Yeah. Getting paid yeah, was basically the uh, the right answer. Uh, HubSpot, which is an internet uh, marketing and sales uh, software company. Um, I guess he was the journalist in residence there. In any event, uh, he left HubSpot. <laughs> for, was for two weeks the editor-in-chief of Gawker until he realized what Gawker really was. Left there. Uh, has been a staff writer for Silicon Valley, and I credit Dan Lyons with a lot of the most accurate uh, stuff in Silicon Valley because it's sometimes so insider and it's just hysterical. Well, apparently all this time, uh, Lyons has been writing a book, uh, a memoir about his life at HubSpot. The, uh, the, memoir say, uh, the blurb for the memoir says, The office vibe was frat house meets cult compound. Shower pods became hookup dens. Nerf gunfights broke out at lunch. And absent bosses specialized in cryptic, jargon-filled emails. In the middle of this sat lions, old enough to be his co-worker's father. So uh, you can imagine with Dan Lyons' wit, uh, acidic wit, oh, and man. Uh, the, this is going to be quite an expose of HubSpot. So much so... You're a little nervous. <laughs> ...that the HubSpot executives apparently hacked Dan and are now in trouble. Federal law enforcement officials have opened a criminal investigation Can into we? attempts by former HubSpot executives to obtain a pre-publication draft of the book. And I'm reading between the lines, but uh, the, the FBI cybercrimes... A task force is uh, working on this. Uh, the probe is at the preliminary stage, so we should say it's not clear whether there will be criminal charges. But the impression I got from uh, the article about this in the Boston Globe is that they attempted to hack Dan Lyons' computer to get the uh, manuscript so they could find out what he was going to say about them uh, before the book was published. Um uh, the manuscript, according to uh, the Globe, the manuscript incident involved some fishiness and really aggressive tactics, um, but they haven't told us more than that. Lyons all is. All I want to know is how how much did Dan Lyons pay these clowns to, to do all this? <laughs> you couldn't have better publicity, right? I hadn't heard about the uh, book until now. Now you I'm, have. Now yeah. I'm waiting for it to come right. out on Audible. Right. We're going to get Dan on uh, as soon as we can. Uh, he's I really like Dan. He's got a, the, the strongest Boston accent. Really, there's no excuse at this point for having an accent that strong. <laughs> He's just doing it to be ornery, I'm sure. Um, he is characterized as the victim in this federal investigation. He did not respond to the article in the uh, Globe. Um, apparently, the executives who were involved or are being investigated are no longer at HubSpot. And HubSpot said it's working on a new training and certification program to reinforce its ethics code. 
<laughs> Good luck with that, bro. <laughs> Wait on that one, right? <laughs> <laughs> before everyone screws up not afterwards yeah. so i just i want to tell all our employees at twit please don't hack anybody's uh, no i don't care if they're writing an expose it's okay and good for dan what great publicity uh for the book i think it's due out soon of course why not of course i'll make it into a movie it's, it's got to be a movie and yeah. they have now made it into a, you know now it's gonna be but you gotta figure in the writer's room they're looking kind of funny at him at silicon valley like are you writing a book about us <laughs> should it, it should is there anything we should be worried about? I just want to say that that synopsis that, that you just read for the book. Yeah, it's like basically every startup I ever yeah, worked at. They're all like that. Like, well, hookups in the shower pod. I, I just want to grab you know, Dan. If you're watching this, I just want to grab you by the collars and choke you on a chin, just like the Dalai Lama did. <laughs> say, Dorothy, I'm sorry, but that's how the that's yeah. how startups work. But it makes a great novel. Or a well, memoir. Well, haven't read it yet. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it might, might make a great novel. I think it will. Dan's a great writer. Dan is so fun. He has such an acerbic wit and a dry wit and a very funny guy. And if you read the fake Steve Jobs, which Those for... his best work. Great. Oh, great stuff. Yeah. And for, and for I, I think, years, nobody knew it was him, right? Right. Yeah. Um, a man arrested for parodying <laughs> the mayor uh, of Peoria, Illinois... Sued and won $125,000. He was arrested when his residence was raided for parodying the town's mayor on Twitter. Uh, John Daniel, the operator of at Peoria Mayor on Twitter, was accused of impersonating a public uh, official. He was never charged. His arrest uh, was prompted by the local mayor, Jim Artis's concern that the tweets in the account falsely portrayed him as a drug abuser who associates with prostitutes. Tweets like, who stole my crack pipe? <laughs> really bugged him. <laughs> um, oh, that's so awesome. So he I went after the guy. The he said, I'll get you. Yeah. Um, Unfortunately, the, the Illinois law that uh, criminalizes impersonation of a public official, it's really more for like, you know, walking up. into a Burger King saying, I'm the mayor, give me hamburgers. Right. It does not include parody and satire, which are, of course, protected forms of free speech. Um, so the attorney for the fake Twitter account took him to court, sued, and they won a $125,000 settlement. Um, okay. Bit of a boomerang on that one. Whoops. Yep. <laughs> Should have left him alone. Who would actually think those tweets were not parody, right? But now well, that's the question. The right. Effect. Right. Uh, that's the question. Um, it's the Streisand effect. Isn't that what they call it? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People just do not learn that lesson. And I, I'm kind of glad they don't because we get stories like this out of it. <laughs> and uh, it makes the whole world like, a more funny place to be in. It's a I mean, better. It's arrested for a Twitter account. That's amazing. It's a better place. Uh, sad story, Pone to Own, uh, which is a great event held every year in Vancouver uh, at PacSec West, the security conference, um, lost its sponsor, HP. Uh, Isn't it only in Japan? They just can't sponsor it in Japan. Oh, it's in Japan only. I think so. Well, they had just, HP had just sponsored one, I think, in Vancouver. That's the normal one, PacSec West. But then, oh, I guess there's one in Japan coming up. It has to do with the whatever the Wasnair. The Wasnair arrangement. <laughs> which sounds like <laughs> it's like not a treaty. A Grisham it's novel. like it's like it, it's kinda of like what we've all agreed the to. Wasnair the Wasnair agreement, agreement. Which apparently is something about you can't, you know, hold on to security exploits. Uh, uh, I always thought that Ponon was a little sketch in that respect, because security researchers would find flaws and then keep them secret so that they could win a free laptop or some money by hacking at the event. But um, HP pulled out this year. put a copy of Dan Lyon's book in there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so this only applies to, the, the is only Japan the only signatory to the Wasanai no, no, no. arrangement? I think, I think what happened was is that there's a, a couple uh, interpretations of, of this I see. arrangement in that Canada, are nebulous. And in Canada, they are clear. It's not an issue. It's not an issue and it's not clear and HP didn't want to get end up being, you know, in trouble. HP's already in enough trouble, you know, on its own right, yeah, they I don't. feel, to not try to engender extra problems yeah. with large corporate buyers yeah. like Japan. Yeah. 
I like this article, and I hope that you read this before you design your website, Jenny. I mean, the potential redesign of the website. I don't know uh, what you're talking about. We don't know what we're talking about. I like either. pie. <laughs> Raspberry <laughs> pie. My oh, favorite. Pie. It's my favorite line so is far it? in uh, Mr. Robot. We <laughs> all know what a raspberry pie is. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I like this article from Benedict Evans in his blog. Forget about the mobile internet. It's, it's the internet. As more and more people visit websites on mobile devices, it's silly to say there's a mobile internet and a regular internet. It's all the mobile internet. We saw that when we did our redesign. More than 50% of our users came to us via smaller screens on iPhones and tablets. I have to say, what really changed it for me was actually the larger iPhone. You know, I didn't think, I didn't really do as much surfing and it was something about that was just the enough size difference that suddenly I have this thing in my pocket that I surf the web with all the time. And don't think about it. So very important. And I could tell with the with that format that you use, Jenny, for the long form, that's yeah. very that's mobile responsive. That will look good on any size screen. We we don't have a mobile site. We don't have right. an app. We have one site that responds smartly to whatever you are looking at. Yep. On. Actually, oddly enough, it's particularly true. Uh, as income falls in, in poorer countries and poorer users are much more likely to be on using the internet on mobile than they are on a computer. Well, I mean, I do a lot of work in Rwanda and, you know, there's only a handful of people that have computers, but everybody has a, has a phone. Yeah. That's been my experience in Central America as well. I spend yeah. a fair amount of time down there and there are entire generations of young people who are very, very internet literate for the internet that is available on your phone. Going to actually sit down at an expensive desktop computer is something that they'll pay a small amount per hour uh, to access. But but that's I think those little businesses, those little kiosks, will become less and less necessary in the developing world. The more that mobile becomes the norm, I think it's wonderful because I think it it really opens up this world, this digital world that we all live in, to people who who just are never going to have the capital to, to each have computers. Yeah. To, according to Andreessen Horowitz, two to three times more smartphones will be in use than PCs by 2020. So you're, if, in fact, if you're designing a site for, you know, thinking, well, here's the desktop version, here's the mobile version, you really got it upside down, basically. You got until 2020 to figure it out, though. Yeah, no, <laughs> now. Uh, we, you know, that was why we did a redesign, frankly, is that, is that we wanted to look good on any size screen. We really wanted it to be mobile, mobile first. I hope, I hope that that makes things uh, better for people with disabilities, too. If you think about it, like uh, if we're designing uh, for platforms that we, we can't predict exactly what platform it will be, maybe the content will be more fluid. I'm talking in like big, big aggregate terms. And maybe people who have visual or auditory disabilities um, you know, if, if we standardize the content and accept that there are lots of different containers that it will, that it will fit into, my hope is that this becomes more inclusive in lots of ways. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, we've always thought that about what we do. We do it in audio and video. Mm -hmm. awesome. Um, you know, I mean, the That's idea, and, and we put it everywhere. Uh, the idea is, uh, to make it as accessible as possible. Text is even better that way, right? I mean, text, you can put it in all sorts of, uh, containers. <laughs> I think that's really cool, and I think it yeah. matters even if you're thinking about uh, a minority. You know, not the, the the majority have full sight, have full hearing, right. and so on. Uh, but designing for the minority means that that you're putting inclusiveness first, and I think that's that's a laudable thing. You want everybody. I wish we could afford closed captioning. That's that's the that's, one thing we don't do. That's one thing that Apple Apple actually has taken a real. I mean, all of those keynotes are all yeah. All closed caption. Yeah, I, I would love subtitled, to do subtitled. Technically. Yeah, subtitled. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, good good closed captioning still requires a human, uh, but as computer dictation and gets better and man. better and better and better, I think we're on, we're not far off from that. I got to yeah. tell you, we worked with we worked with a lot of uh, folks doing subtitles, and it's like magic watching those guys work. Every once in a while, they'll They're, have them on site. Most of the time, we just we, we yeah. give them a video feed or an audio feed, and they just send us back the text that hooks into the box. So it's just one person. You don't have. Well, we have lots of people we work with. Because I would think sometimes they need we, a break. It'd well, be no, hard to do oh, that. They'll, yeah, but they'll they'll do it for. I mean, they can do it for hours. Really? Yeah, but but the but the wow. um, uh, but a lot of times we do ones that are like multiple languages right. and stuff stuff like that. And then you have a, 
a interpreter who's then talking to the to the person doing the subtitling who's there in a different in another language. Yes, yeah, so well, we got. Oh my We'll get goodness. them in. We'll put them in three languages, and then and then have, and then you have anyway. So <laughs> the. Um, but it's all, all of it's done like in the cloud. Like you don't really, right. you, no one's, but every once in a while they're on set. And these but guys, that's silly, they're happen. like, they're sitting there like, you know what, and, and the keys don't make any sense. So like you right. look at it, it's the craziest little keyboard I've ever seen. Oh, they seen. have a special keyboard. Oh, it's, it's like a, it's like a, um, Steno. You know, Steno, but yeah. it's like, but they all, all of them are different. They're all in their own little software and they've, they made all their tweaks to do it the way they want to do wow. it. And so no one can use each other's keyboard. Oh my goodness. And it's like, we had four of them in for, for an event we were doing and, and, and they were, and, and you see them and they're just sitting away and it's just amazing. It's like, it's like magic. I mean, it's, it really is. That is the most beautiful picture I've ever seen. <laughs> Jenny, do you, do you dye your hair to match Chappie's hair? It kind of worked out that way, didn't it? <laughs> I love it. Hey, bro. What do you think the second most popular app is in the U.S.? It's Facebook Messenger. What? Facebook just, you know, not so long ago, maybe a year ago, separated Messenger out of uh, its Facebook app. According to Comscore, Facebook is number one and number two now. You know, I thought that the mess splitting Messenger out was crazy when they did it. And yeah. Now I, mm, I'm, yeah. I vastly mm, prefer mm. it that way. Number three most popular app. This is among all smartphone users in the U.S. YouTube, Google Search, Google Play, Google Maps, Pandora Radio. Wow. Gmail, Instagram, Yahoo Stocks. That's the top 10. Then Apple Maps, Amazon Mobile, Twitter, Apple Music. Apple Music's that's in there. That's all the stuff I delete. I know. <laughs> as soon as I get the phone, <laughs> take that stuff off. Hey, I think you deserve a snack. If you've never had Nature Box pineapple rings, you've got to get these. There's, first of all, read the ingredient list. Dried pineapple. <laughs> that's that's all. No sugar, no sulfites, nothing. Just dried pineapple. And I don't Here's know how one. they do it. The technology, I don't know what. They're they're perfect. They're not too chewy, not too soft. See, they're I'm moist with. Them. They're you break them out. Would you like some? I want one. Now, one of the things. First of all, Nature Box delivers snacks to your home. Monthly boxes by mail. They have hundreds of snacks, all kinds. They have vegan. They have uh, gluten free. They have sweet, savory, spicy. They're really, they're kind of like a snack laboratory, but all the snacks are designed by nutritionists to be healthful. Never any high fructose corn syrup or trans fats, zero artificial colors or flavors, just good stuff that you'd want to snack on. Oh, just take a whiff of that pineapple ring. That's so awesome. Uh, now, some of you like sweets. Alex, you look like you might like whole wheat chocolate chip cookie bites. I really like only one. I would indeed. That sounds quite nice. Yeah, mini Belgian waffles, watermelon oh, mini stars. <laughs> You know, I just made, it's funny, I just made, um, um, I saw an Instructables for making uh, uh, Lego gummy bears, gummy candies. Mm -hmm. Easy to do. So I went and I ordered some Star Wars ice cube trays, and I made Darth Vader gummy bears, and I made, I guess it's not a bear, gummy Vaders. I made a, I made a R2-D2. It was really fun. So I kind of know what you put in, and these are these are even better. Apple juice puree, apple juice, natural flavor, pectin, black carrot juice, concentrate for color and citrus fiber to give it some chew. These are the watermelon mini stars. Good stuff. So your kids can eat them. Your, uh, your, you will eat them. Your employees will eat them. These are resealable bags, so you don't have to eat them all up. And we're going to get you your first box on us. You just pay $2 shipping and handling when you go to naturebox.com slash twit. These are, the, these are the best pineapple. Are, are they not? Ever had. We actually, and you can do this. They're always too sweet. Like when you get the ones yeah. that are really thick and they're. You can pick one snack and just have the whole box be one snack. We get two or three pineapple uh, snacks uh, every month. Nature Box, flavorful snacks made with ingredients you can trust. You're going to love them. And it's a nice thing when your Nature Box comes. They put out new snacks every single month. So you're, you'll never get bored. And if you don't like a snack, you can experiment. They have a smart snack guarantee. There's never. Uh, anything that you don't love, if you find something you don't like, just tell them, and they'll replace it next month's uh, box. It's easy, it's satisfying, it's delicious, and my mouth is watering. It's Nature Box. Right now, get your uh, first box on them. Pay just $2 shipping. Naturebox.com slash twit. A couple of... I need to not, not eat before we do that ad, because I am really hungry. And I'm so sorry. Actually about to cry. And like, if there were I'm any way I could good. push you these snacks, I would. But see, if you were here, Alex... You'd have tequila and I, snacks. I, I promise I will come back with a minute. <laughs> All I can say is it's it's really tasty. It's really good. So Thanks, guys. Just rub that in a little bit. <laughs> My pleasure. Our, our, 
our publisher, uh, Jason Weisberger, Boring Boring's publisher, Jason Weisberger, had a sample of those at his house one time. And I think I... I stole most of the box. Yeah. They were really good. I'm very picky <laughs> about this kind of stuff. No, it's good. I, I never buy like fruit that has sulfur on it because yeah. I right. just don't like it. They do that to preserve it, yeah. but it's not good for you, I don't think. Anyway, I wouldn't want to eat it. Uh, there's no sulfites, no sulfur. Uh, it's just pineapple. I love that. They're really yummy snacks. Not just mm. the dried fruits, but all of their snacks yes. are super yummy. Jenny, you should come back and do all the ads. <laughs> You're great. I'm, I'm jealous of all the wonderful stuff. <laughs> I love it. Uh, wow. Real quickly, we're running through a few. Uh, I know we're going long here. I just, I just love you guys, and it's so much fun to spend a, a Sunday afternoon with you. Amazon was forced to redo their deals for ebooks, allowing publishers to set their own prices. What did publishers do? They jacked the prices up. What happened to ebook sales? They plummeted. Um, uh, ebook prices. This is the least surprising news story. I know. Like, I mean, who, who who didn't think this was going to happen? Yeah. Publishers are really not economists because, and this is the most obvious. Those, what else was going to happen? The five Her. biggest publishers' average cost of books in the Kindle bookstore ten dollars and eighty one cents. All other twenty fifteen ebooks on the site average price four dollars ninety five cents. Uh, once you get over ten bucks, the co the 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 uh, common wisdom is nobody's going to buy it. Jonathan Franzen's new novel, and I love Franzen. It's called Purity. Fifteen dollars for an ebook. I think people go, but this didn't cost anything to print. I have to admit, I buy I, I buy technical manuals, so they're more, much the, more expensive. The print now. book for Purity is fourteen dollars. And uh, wait a minute, no, I'm sorry. The hardcover. I'm sorry, I, I switched it around. The print book is fifteen dollars and ten cents. The ebook's fourteen ninety nine, eleven cents less. It should be a little it less than that, don't you think? But Leo, the print book makes a delicious snack. When you, run out of your snack I, you know, but that's the point. If I'm going to pay 15 bucks for the book, I'm going to get the print version. Then I'm not going to get the ebook no, version. Well, maybe not. I, don't I like, like books. I do not like. I do not like carrying things around. I think I'm so space. Like I, I won't even buy anything that's on in in on paper. Like I just. Mm. <laughs> it's funny that Jenny would write this article. Find out when your name was popular with Baby Name Explorer. I'm not in there. I'm guessing. Interesting. <laughs> that Jenny is not in that list. How ironic. No. No. I of course I looked up Pat. Yeah. <laughs> Remember the SNL? Yeah. The yeah. ambiguously uh, yeah. 1940 was really big for Pat. <laughs> By the way, the blue line is baby boys. The pink line is baby girls. Mm -hmm. And so evidently, yeah, in the in the si early 60s it was very ambiguous. Yeah, 1960 an equal number of boys and girls were named Pat. It's very interesting. So that explains it. Mine was, uh, very, mine was not anywhere near when I was born. Alex? Was Let's do Alex. Born. I think we know some people named Alex. Uh, is it Alexander or Alex? Ooh, wow. Mine's Alexander. I think I think they so yeah, same, but go by Alex. Looks like 1995 was decline. Yeah. big. And it's just died off. Nobody wants to be Alexander. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> wants to be Alexander. Not after watching this show, they don't. Z-E-N-I, <laughs> Jenny, there's no... no. Sorry. <laughs> it's not... Wow, you even get a pop-up. <laughs> it's not in the baby name database. Sorry. No. Xavier is. Javier. Javier. I bet Leo's in there. Leo was really popular in the uh, 20s. You're, you're, you're on the rise, man. <laughs> it's coming back. We're coming back, baby. That's all you. That's all you. Leo man. peaked in 1918. But look at it. It's, it's spiking. And then plummeted to its low at 1990. But it is spiking. It's now uh, it's now 0.1% of all babies are named Leo. Interesting that, that, that since you were on TV, it's been spiking. Do you think they're naming them after me? I think so. I think you know, my, my, I reconnected with my first girlfriend on Facebook. That's one of the things Facebook is good for, right? First girlfriend ever, uh, Kathy. And uh, we were high school uh, sweethearts. Mm -hmm. And um, I found out that her son was named Leo. And I thought, oh, dear. <laughs> and she swears that that's not, has nothing to do with me. Awkward. Awkward. Yeah, just a little bit. Don't tell your husband. <laughs> Awkward. Snapchat is now, I mean, Snapchat video has gone through the roof. Any of you use Snapchat? Too old. Yeah. <laughs> Too old. I'm not cool enough. So. I think you could Snapchat that picture of you lying what appears to be naked in your squash. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa, every 
every person young enough to be using Snapchat would go, ah! <laughs> I tried to use Snapchat. Nick Bilton and Baratunde Thurston, like, are all in on Snapchat, right? I don't yeah. understand. And they came on the show, they said, you got to use Snapchat. It's the, it's the biggest thing. And this was actually when they had just launched the new Discover feature of Snapchat. And I said, but look, if I put work into, you know, this big production, you know, my big Snapchat story, I want it to be preserved. But right. after a day, it's gone. What's the app that uh, teens and tweens who are too cool to be using Snapchat or using? Cyberdust. Cyberdust? Oh, that's the one where nobody really? knows you exist. That's Mark Cuban's app. Yeah, it just, it just uh, appears and disappears. Doesn't that make it not interesting immediately? Mm, he posts interesting things on it. Mark Cuban? No. Yeah, it's like there was actually some good stuff that just appears and then disappears. I'm just jealous because he invented internet on the radio. <laughs> I mean, radio on the internet. Actually, yeah, wait yeah. a minute. We, we can do internet on the internet radio. Internet on the radio. It's not too late. You know, if you're going to have a loudmouth rich guy run for president, how come it couldn't be Mark Cuban? Yeah, there's a good no, point. That would be fun. It'd be fun to have Mark Cuban debating uh, Donald Trump. Donald Trump. That would be, that would be awesome. Oh, my God. Let's start a draft Cuban movement. No, 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 no. I can't take that. Our poor country can't take that. <laughs> oh, my God. It would just... Democracy. It would be, we'd fall oh. off the edge of the earth. So who's still posting on Snapchat? Snapatunde? Baratunde's right up there. Um, but here's the point. News story. Four billion daily video views in April. That's double what it was getting at the end of 2014. Four billion every day. And these... Uh, you know, brands that are spending money like Comedy Central, People, Vice, ESPN, apparently are doing great. Deals with Major League Baseball, Live Nation. Now, there's, of course, that question, because Facebook counts a view after like a second. There's some question whether Snapchat is, you know, how they're well, counting it. They wouldn't say. Facebook changed its uh, video algorithm, I, I want to say about a month ago or oh, so, good. and really cut down the number of reported views because it was insane. Um, it hurt my ego because I saw my video views decline <laughs> by a lot. Right. I should count it correctly. But, but that was after the, the, the piece calling Facebook a liar by a VideoTube star yes. named, I can't remember his name. VideoTube. Uh, VideoTube? Uh, yeah, and he, but, he, but he also pointed out that uh, Facebook was not doing all it should to prevent... <laughs> pirated videos on Facebook, and they've responded to that as well. They are now doing a content ID uh, thing on Facebook. So I think they listen anyway. And if they're going to get video creators to move from YouTube, they've got to. Very important. Um, I think we can wrap it up. I'll just, one uh, quick note. Uh, I, I like to mention these technology pioneers. I think they're not well remembered. James L. Flanagan passed away at the age of 89 uh, this week. He would, a day before his 90th birthday, Why Do You Care? He was at Bell Labs, wrote a seminal article, which unfortunately is still behind a paywall in 1976, Computers That Talk and Listen, Man-Machine Communication by Voice. If you like Siri, if you like Google Now, if you like Cortana, you can thank James L. Flanagan, whose research really made it possible for computers to listen and respond uh, to what we say and also for mp3s efficient digital transmission of human voice and a lot more uh dr flanagan passed away uh, this week at the age of 18. it's always it always does come down to some person who thought that this would be a good idea <laughs> and gets and, everybody and, going you know, you know right, that, to right, think you know, of that in you know the, the 60s right. and kind of come up with a basic research that then of course it takes decades for it to make it to the market he it is another note to his uh, fame is he was one of six acoustical experts uh, who uh, examined the 18 and a half minutes of missing audio from the Nixon tapes during Watergate and determined that they must have been erased on purpose. Mm -hmm. So he had a little bit of a footnote in history uh, as well. That's when Rosemary Woods it's a really showed cool this claim to fame, actually. stretch. Yeah, you it's know, pretty cool. I wish yeah. I had something cool like that in my life. Well, you may. You're young. Time's not over. You may have a yeah. chance. I feel like it. Okay, well, we'll see. And as uh, Alex pointed out, and I think this is a good thing, the the uh, judgment on the Silicon Valley no poaching agreements that Apple, Google, and many others had made. This is a, a yeah. violation of trust law, antitrust law. Um, you're not supposed to because it's bad for the employees. If you say, well, I won't hire anybody from your team if you don't hire anybody from my team. 
$415 million settlement. Uh, so Which is not that much money. Actually. Not when you divide it among 64,000 workers. Yeah. Yeah, it's like sixty. It's like sixty five hundred dollars a piece, and uh, given the scale of the suit and uh, how many people it affected for how long, I mean, they're getting away with murder here. Yeah. Uh, and these companies, you know, Apple, Google, and so forth, have essentially endless money, and uh, so to see them walk with really less than a tap on the wrist um, from a broader perspective is, I think, a disappointment. But yeah. it's over now, so you know, it's done. We do. Yeah, it's over. And as you point out, Facebook not on that list. They did not agree yeah. to do that. Well, I think back then when this was going on, Facebook was so hot, they didn't want to disarm. I think they wanted to have the capability to poach um, because they, they could because they were growing so quickly. Right. But that well, was, they needed know, to. I think there was a pure need, need issue. They, they, didn't, they didn't have a choice. They, they afford had to, to steal people from yeah. all those companies yeah. you know, to, to, to grow, yeah. to get the – you know, there's only a – I mean, I, I know we talk about bringing, you know, like people in. We have enough programmers here in the United States, but there's really a small number of people – I mean, in the millions, but a small number of people that can do quality code – I mean, it just takes a lot of time and effort and, and to learn it well enough to do yeah. good structure. All right. I am. Uh, I'm, I feel like the schoolmaster who is ready for the bell to ring. I'm going to release you all. <laughs> Poor uh, Jenny has already fallen asleep along, along no, with Chaffee. It's just my chill out day. It's so cute. <laughs> oh, my God. What are you going to do for uh, Wait, what are you doing for Labor Sorry. Day, Jenny? I'm hanging out with my dog and my sweetie and playing oh, on the beach. Nice. We love you so much. I am so glad that you're still with us, still making us smile, think, laugh, cry. Uh, you're just the greatest. Boingboing.net. <laughs> Wow.boingboing.net. If you want to go to the world of wonder. Chappie will be there. Chappie will be there. So will Jenny. So nice to see you again. Thank you, I feel Leo. like it's Thank been ages much. and ages. I and, hope uh, that, that you'll have me back we will. and I'll have a puppy cam uh, rigged up Good. E even more stable. Speaking for the white male patriarchy, <laughs> <laughs> which I do. I don't know if you know that, but actually I am in charge. <laughs> yeah. I, th I thank you for your service. You're so cute. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Alex Wilhelm, you're That's not so right. bad to yourself there. Alex <laughs> Wilhelm. I'm not going to touch that at all. No, no, I wish you would. Uh, Alex is at te TechCrunch.com. Help me, save me. Uh, and uh, joins us uh, from time to time. He's a very frequent uh, contributor on uh, TNT as well, where we love having him. Great to see you once again. Good to be here. The tequila is uh, is waiting next time. It is, and dinner. So tequila, tequila, dinner, pineapple rings, whatever you want. There we go. Mr. Alex Lindsay, PixelCore.com. We didn't get a chance to talk about the DXO, but uh, I think you talked about it on MacBreak Weekly. If people want to know more. I didn't talk about our Mac break. We you didn't, didn't but Andy did. Andy did. Andy did, yeah. Well, next time you're on, maybe you can give us a little demo. Yeah, no, it's great. This um, is a $600 camera that is an accessory for your, what? Your iPhone it has a lightning cable uh, port. Uh, you plug it into your uh, phone and it does. I actually ordered one after you talked about it. It's so good. I now have to get an iPhone, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> Tuesday. I think I'll be, uh, well, Friday I'll be and I'll get, I'll set the alarm. I pretty much don't go anywhere without. I'll be now. back east, which means I'll have to get up at three in the morning. <laughs> or you want to stand in line for me on September eighteenth? All right, we'll see. This is really cool, and we made the video. And and uh, you'll hear Alex's dulcet tones. <laughs> it was supposed to be a scratch track on the video at DXO. And ended up being the dot com. The whole thing. Thank you all for being here. We do uh, this week in tech every Saturday afternoon, three p.m. Pacific, six p.m. Eastern time. 2200 UTC on twit.tv. We'd love it if you watch live. We, if you'd like to be in the studio audience, we'd love it if you would stop by. Thank you all for being here. Just email tickets at twit.tv. We'll put out a chair for you. As you can see, many more chairs than there were people. So What happened? What happened? Well, it's Labor Day. That family that was here. Oh, it's Labor Day. The family was here left. Yeah, they said, oh, it's going to be that show, eh? And they just took off. They ran as fast oh, as they could. Windows Weekly. We love to have you here. If you can't be here live, don't worry. On-demand audio and video is always available for all of our shows at the website, twit.tv, now mobile-friendly. And uh, wherever you get your podcasts, on the internet, iTunes, your favorite app on your mobile device. Thanks for being here. We'll see you next time. Another Twit this is, is in the can. Bye-bye. <laughs> Golf clap. Doing the Twit.